coming up in this episode. Yeah, I was a prison guard just for almost 11 years. A bit of a crazy time, yeah. You know yourself, you go in a pub and you'll be like looking at guys thinking, I don't even want to make eye contact with this guy because he's fucking lively. And you've got to be near enough a wing full of these sort of people. Is that something they train you to spot drugs being smuggled in? One of the, like, the sick things was when newborn babies would come in. And this particular female staff, she went out to this baby. She's like, hello, how are you? And all this good stuff. And this baby smiled. And in the cheeks of this baby oh, were two packages of drugs, yeah. Fun. You are joking. Because you hear these stories, like they've got Playstations and all this, but all the stories you've said, it's like, fuck that, I would yeah. not want to go there. I told you earlier, and as I look at it, this guy's got a detached red, and what? his eyes basically hanging down his fucking cheek. That's a thought that really won't leave me, to be honest. How real is, you know, dropping the soap in the shower thing? As we sort of strip searching him, we heard this kind of muffled ringtone of like, <laughs> you've obviously got a phone on you, where is it? He went, look, I've very soon. <laughs> <laughs> and he was out in the yard on his own, and fucking crazy this guy was. And I'd be like, yeah, come on in, mate, and you come now. He just shook his head, he went, no, I'm not coming in tonight. <laughs> fucking hell, here we go. I can't think of a harder job mm. than being a prison guard. It's every day, isn't it? The he just absolutely fucking lost it, and he grabbed him by the fucking throat. He said, if you fucking quote my name and address again or I'll make your fucking life a misery in the prison system. And as I warned you, we're going to go deeper and darker. As soon as I entered this wing, I could smell like the metallic smell of blood. And as I'm walking closer to this cell, the smell is getting worse and worse and worse. And I could feel my hands getting sweatier and thinking, fuck me, what am I going to find here? And you've never seen blood like it. It's fucking crazy. And you, you know, you weren't trying to deal with that. How are we doing? I hope you're well. Today, we have got a guest on. I've wanted to set this pod up for a very, very long time. Uh, it's something that fascinates me. It's something that I have gone into in detail uh, in uh, my own channel, uh, Prison Stories, etc. We have Michael on today. He's uh, my cousin's partner. I've known Michael a very long time, and over the years, he's told me Wow, some incredible stories about his time as a prison guard. So, without further ado, uh, Michael, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us how long you were a prison guard for, etc. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. Um, yeah, I was a prison guard just for almost 11 years. Um, worked in my local prison. Uh, bit of a nightmare job, to be honest. Um, obviously, I told you a few of the stories and something I probably we're going to tap into tonight so uh yeah a bit of a crazy time yeah most definitely i i i i, I take my hat off to you for uh for even taking the job it's, it's a place that i hope and this is not reused <laughs> in the future i hope i never end up in uh <laughs> it's just that you can imagine i'm one of them like meme pages we'll like, that. yeah famous yeah. last <laughs> words well i'm doing a 20 stretch but um <laughs> but yeah funny. before we we carry on uh mike i know we had a little chat just before you came on but um next to me we've got lozzy jimmy mike. and dan okay. and uh yeah just thank you so much for for your time today so let's kick off let's let's start from the beginning because I imagine it to be very daunting, you know, going into prison as a prisoner. But I'd imagine, unless I'm completely wrong, it would probably be quite daunting, you know, doing your first shift in that. So what's sort of like the process, you know, the interview process, the training process and your first day? Yeah, well, I applied online um, because the reason I applied online is because I was struggling for work and you kind of knew that working in a prison is a constant production, but it's going to keep rolling. So I applied online, had to do an online maths and English test, pretty simple. And then you get interviewed, uh, and then you get invited to a, what they call a JSAC, which is a job simulation assessment center. You go there and you you have to like do this role play thing. You get like a, somebody who's a Mr. Angry and you have to calm them down. You get somebody who's suicidal, which is obviously, as you're probably aware, is quite a common thing in jail. Course. And then you get somebody else and you kind of don't really know what this guy's problem is, but you kind of have to delve in and do a little bit about it. So you go away for a job simulation assessment centre. The first one you get is the Mr. Angry. And they've obviously got their briefing card and you've got your own briefing card. You go into this room and this guy's straight in your face. It's like, where the fuck are you then? Straight in your face. <laughs> Let's just kind of see how people react and 
I've known people completely lose their shirt over it and say, you and me outside now. And they've kind of like, <laughs> you know, stop the whole interview process. And you have to kind of like, not calm this down. It's kind of buzzwords. If you kind of like, if you raise your hands up here, that's a little bit of a, you know, you shouldn't be doing that because it's kind of like a bit of an aggressive stance. Oh, okay. But you try and calm them down. You've then also got uh, somebody who's suicidal and you go and speak to them and they're kind of just looking at the floor and, you kind of get into the depths in that and you kind of find out that they're being bullied in the prison and you kind of like set up a little bit of an action plan of what you're going to do to, you know, help them through their time. And then, uh, and that's basically it. And then how you get on to that job simulation assessment centre is whether you get offered the job or not. So wow. it's kind of like a points-based thing. There's, you don't even have an interview for it. That's really? what you do. You have a maths and English centre and then you go to this job simulation assessment centre. And if you can handle being shouted at basically and, Talk to people, you're in. You're joke. So yeah. that that blows my mind because, like, psychologically, in the back of your head, you know that they're actors. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, like, yeah. it's, it, you have someone screaming at you but acting. It's a bit different to someone who's on like a 25 yeah. stretch for murdering eight people. Yeah, surely. Yeah. I also think as well, like they're they're seeing sort of how how like you react and stuff to to these situations, but like. <clears throat> They're not really, you know, if there's no further part of the interview, they're not sort of yeah. seeing what you're like as a person, sort of deep inside, like, you know, they, they you know, like sometimes they ask you like, you know, what what hobbies and different things, like yeah, you just yeah. don't know what what people are, so you'd, you'd expect them to like sort of delve a bit deeper, but like I say, I suppose they just want people that can yeah. deal with that sort of confrontation. Yeah. And like yeah. if you can deal with that, then and you're pretty yeah, much you're in. in. Yeah. And, but, and, um, and I guess, because you were saying about how, as you can imagine, there's a big turnover rate yeah. for prison guards. They're probably not desperate, but you know, they're like you say, it's not yeah. not the most intricate process. Were you surprised? Time to waste, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. 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 So but then we've got a riot down the prison. Can you start today? <laughs> yeah. Were you surprised at like? Did you find it quite easy the the process? Um, yes, I did. Yeah, like some people, they'll just get completely nervous, and you know, they can probably, you know, on paper, be quite a good prison officer because I used to say it's all about how you speak to people and how you yeah, deal with yeah. people. You know, and some people would just completely fold under that scenario, you know. And mm. Some guys you'd expect to sort of like fly through this job simulation assessment centre thing would completely crumble, you know, and you speak to them afterwards, you'd be like, how'd you get on? And they'd be like, fuck it, oh man, I just completely just messed it up, you know. And, mm. you know, and then they didn't get, it, get in and then you do your job simulation, you put down three choices of the prisons that you want to work at. So you obviously you pick the ones that are closest to your home address. Yeah. And uh, I got my first choice, so I went to my local prison. Mm -hmm. You do three weeks at the training school, um, which is kind of a bit military-esque, I'd say, really. Cool. And then you do a week back at the prison that you're going to be assigned to. And then you do another three weeks, I believe, which is um, at the training school again. And then that's the way you go. You're, you're kind of live working as a prison officer after them uh, – Weeks of training, yeah. So what what are them weeks of training in, entail? Well, you've kind of like got like uh, like mock wings in there, like set up wings, oh. things about paperwork. Um, you kind of do um, scenarios if someone's barricaded up in a cell and they're refusing to leave their cell. And just kind of like, just kind of what they call jail craft, really. So how interesting, kind of like, isn't it? So you interesting. You know, how like you, like even just down to things like holding keys and things like that because yeah. – yeah. Obviously, you know, you, you don't want to be waving your keys around and you've got guys in there that are in for fraud. Yeah. And they've got photographic memories and then they're <laughs> obviously sending stuff in about, you yeah, know, yeah. what the keys look like, you know, and that sounds a bit crazy. Fucking but that, that's just like your jail craft, you know, and just, just how to command yourself, you know, and not, not a defensive posture, but just, just how to command yourself when you're working in a prison because you can't these look guys, weak. Yeah, because these guys, some of these guys have been in like 20, 30 years, you know, so. They're already ahead of you before you've even got in there. Yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. hell, man. That's that's absolutely nuts. And they've got time, in they, to think like all day. Yeah. They're like literally that anything, any little thing they can get up on you. Yeah, like, exactly. they've got the whole day, or they've got days and days to well, think they, yeah, about. They got, yeah, they've got eight. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you know, that's you, all they've got. It's yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The people yeah. who work in there, like we think, we go to work. We think about yeah. you know what we're gonna have for dinner. What we, you know, yeah. what's on the telly Going later. On, family, weekend, this yeah. and that. All they're concentrating on is. How can I get them keys? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you have to, you def, suppose you definitely have to be on your on game. Oh man! So so that's that's so 
yeah so they go through scenarios and how to to present yourself and stuff so what after all that training like six weeks or whatever it was you rock up on your first day how was your first day and what did it entail um basically the day of the prison the prison that i was in was what they call a training prison right. and uh at a training prison that's where they have to go to work um they either have to do full-time education okay basically just basically anything a meaningful activity um there was like numerous workshops there there was like a carpentry workshop there was a print shop in there where the prison is completely self-sustainable where in this print shop, all the paperwork for the prison is done in this print shop. So you get the guys doing that. There's a, obviously, like I said, there's a tailor's workshop where the prison clothes are made. Oh, wow. Um, so the, yeah, so the prison's sustainable. And obviously, you've got guys working in the kitchen. But when you were giving guys a job in the kitchen, you really wanted to be trusting these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, these guys are handling food every day, you know. So, yeah. you know, these are the guys that you wanted to kind of really trust on, yeah. Do the prison guards eat the same food? You're not supposed to, but sometimes <laughs> you'd be in there and that'd be like, on a, on a Sunday, they used to do a fry-up and the fry-up wasn't that bad. <laughs> like, I've, I've had worse than fry-ups and greasy spoons, better than that. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of wait for the prison strap there and you probably load up a little bit, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> was the food all right in the in general? In general? Yeah, well, I didn't think it was too bad. Yeah. Like, obviously, you'd come down and like, and believe it or not, like the kind of the mad world we live in, there'd be a comments book on the wing for the prisoners to write in, you know? So you could, yeah. And some of the, some of the comments that you'd read in there would be hilarious. And you'd be doing the meal one day and you'd often have a browse through the, uh, the comments book. And this particular prisoner wrote in there, this particular dark coming boy, what it was there, what he had to eat. But his comments were shit, shit and more shit. This is fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> So I just put something on along the side of like, uh, if the if the owner of these comments would like to come and speak to me about it, we'll speak to the kitchen, you know. So, but they never did. But but the food was okay, you know. You'd have a roast dinner on a Sunday, and that was okay. Um, but some prisons you go to, some food can be really bad. But yeah. but some of the guys that you, you we'd have working in the kitchen, like prisoners. Some of these guys would have you know worked in, in yeah proper yeah. kitchens yeah, yeah cooking in his yeah you know yeah. so. Some of them kind of did take a bit of pride in what they were doing because that's kind of all they had to do, really. Yeah, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, so some of the food went bad, yeah. Well, head chefs, it wasn't all prison. I guess the head chefs were Yeah, you employed. had like guys in there. And one of the guys that we had working in our prison, I don't know how true this is because I find it a little bit strange, but apparently he worked in the Savoy. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's where he left. That's where he learned his trade, but um, and he ended up I, in a prison. I stepped down from the boy to serve up a life sentence prison. <laughs> oh man, we'll we'll get back to actually no, we won't. We'll do it right now um, as we're talking about food. That's a place you know you see in movies and stuff like the slop. Yeah, and yeah. And, and like it's usually where it all kicks off. Yeah, 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 yeah give yeah, me that yeah. roast potato or I'll fucking stab you type thing. <laughs> What what is from your experience? What's the reality there? Was it quite a hostile environment, or do you just not fuck with someone's food? Um, it, that was always like the volatile time. I'd say was um, at meal times, like um, what they call the servery area. As you imagine, like a hot plate in a cafeteria. All the prisoners are coming down. They're queuing for their food, so they're all together at this point in the prison I was in. And the guys that would work on what they call the servery, you'd kind of employ like. Not the bullies, but the kind of hard nuts of the okay. wing. You'd have to be serving the food because you knew the prisoners that come down wouldn't fuck with these guys yeah, because yeah. there'd be kind of a little bit of retribution afterwards. And that would always be a volatile time serving meals, you know, and sometimes you'd be there. And if you had a guy on working on the on the server, a prisoner who wasn't kind of like, didn't want that confrontation, you'd be there and you'd be like serving up what they call that. Uh, the, the crumble day would be like apple crumble, things like that. And they'd say, can you serve up government? And you'd be like, yeah. And you'd be there like putting one ladle of custard on and you'd always get one person say, stick us another label, ladle on there, please, government. You'd be like, mate, yeah, I've got yeah. another 800 people coming through here. I can't get a fuck all. Yeah. And then and then they'd like, what? And Because most of these lads had never been told no in their life. And then obviously they come to prison. And then there's kind of rules that they've got to conform to. And yeah, yeah. that could obviously be a bit of a volatile situation, you know. Mm. 
Yeah, especially when people are hungry. That's when. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're hungry. Uh, they're hungry, isn't it? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's a real thing, isn't it? Yeah, you, it you, is. you, know, you start yeah. getting hungry, and and you know that you can smell the dinner, you know, smell the gravy, and it, you, you start getting a bit twitchy, don't you? You're like, yeah, well, I do anyway. <laughs> yeah, but where's, you, where's my smiley faces? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's also like a power test, isn't it? It's like they yeah. don't really want the extra cost or whatever. It's just like the the one. Can they get, get one? Yeah, if they get one up, then it's like, oh, you yeah. know, oh, I've got one up on you. It's a psychological thing, where yeah. it, like. But you do it for one, you got to do it for everyone. It's yeah. a fucking, yeah, can turn into a right mess. Have you ever seen any like proper brawls in the in the food area over food or even? Um, yeah, quite a few times. Like uh, we had a guy on the wing I was working on, and he was a he was a bad alcoholic, you know. So obviously, there's no alcohol in jail, but these guys are going to find a way to make their own homebrew. Yeah, and the way they used to make the homebrew was be they'd get oranges, so they'd let yeah. oranges ferment. They'd put, they'd put bread in there for the yeast. They'd put sugar in there. They'd even put marmite in there and gliven it up. Jeez. And this this guy was an alcoholic, ended up putting like prescribed meds in there as well. Jesus. So no. you imagine you've just got like a, basically a cocktail full of fucking hurt here that the, yeah. that the guy the wing are going to get hold of. And some of these lads, you know, like, you know yourself, you go in a pub and you'll be like looking at guys thinking, I don't even want to make eye contact with this guy because he's fucking lively. But yeah. Yeah. you've got to imagine you've got a, probably like near enough a wing full of these sort of people. Yeah. And um, this particular day, he'd been brewing up this hooch that we knew nothing about. And we're sort of serving the sort of like the tea time meal, which was about half past four. And a few guys are coming down collecting their meal and they're staggering and they're kind of giving you the fucking angry pissed up stare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, here we go. <laughs> I know it sounds really cheesy, but you could really feel yeah, 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 yeah. the wing change. And um, we always call this particular day because they were serving up apple crumble. They call it the rumble in the crumble. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Oh, and then, mate. This particular day, it just, it just fucking went off and you, you're trying to get prisoners behind their door and you're just trying to get them out of the, behind their door because they're pissed up because you want to go home as well. So I've got this guy in his cell door and I said, look, I need you behind your door, buddy. Uh, so it's time for, time for lockup now. And he sort of like drops his shoulders and he looks at me like, well, what are you going to do if I don't go in here? And I'm like, no, let's not go down that route. We really don't want to be doing that today. Let's not go down there. He's like, I want to know what you got to do. And I look at this bowler apple crumble he's got in his right hand and I'm thinking I'm going to be wearing this <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know the right hand goes back and goes launch and we're covered in it so we're like rolling around with this guy on the floor and you're just thinking what kind of a <laughs> fucking mad world am I working in here you know yeah, Cuss is flying <laughs> From the fucking hell! Oh, so man. was it brilliant. was it quite common for for you know these these uh, self made probably in a toilet alcohols to be to be made and like when you yeah. say like it's got this is like this is a stupid question but when you say like marmite bread oranges medication it obviously tasted like shit I know I'm sure you haven't tried it but it could, they they obviously weren't doing it for the flavour were they absolutely just to get off their edge you know on yeah. it you know and. And to be honest, like flip side of the coin, if you've done a few years in there and you, you like a drink and you just want a bit of escapism, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get I'm sure everyone's going to want to have a little bit. But yeah. obviously, if you caught it in, if you caught prisoners actually had it in their possession, mm. you could place them on report. And, that, that bit, and when they'd get placed on report, they'd go in front of a, a district judge and sort the prison. They'd get out of time for things like that. Yeah. And because like they'd have their own solicitor that, that would come in. They would try and fight tooth and nail, get off with it. And we used to test the alcohol proof. Oh, yeah. Some oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And some of it was like 22%, some of the stuff Jesus. that they made. You know, and that's like, that's a, you know, you can't even get any beer, can you? That's a, yeah. Like, yeah. I know, about 22%. Yeah. You know, even a decent bottle of wine is not going to be that. So you imagine these guys that not had a drink for a few months. Yeah. And they've just had a good gallon of 22%. Yeah. That's not going to remember, is it? You know, so. <laughs> that, no, absolutely. So, just pulling it back to, you know, when you're saying like, you know, it's palpable in the air, these guys are pissed up and stuff and you know it's going to kick off. I do recall because when the prison closed, um, you uh, took me round and it was a hell of an, an experience seeing it all. And I, I do remember going to the food hall and, you know, looking at the size of it and then you saying how many guys were in there 
compared to would, 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 I might remember this wrong because it was about seven years ago but didn't you say there'd only be like three or four guards on to like X amount of how many what was the split you know guards to prisoners and then when you know it's going to kick off like is it like I need to you know get my head in the game or is it I need to slink off and get some riot gear or you know what's going on well the the kitchen that I shoot you when you was in there when you was there was that's where they used to kind of like that was the central dining hall yeah. But, like, even anybody who doesn't work in a prison, now it's not fucking very clever to have, like, 500 prisoners all at the same time. Yeah. In a you know, you've got, like, the gang culture in there. You've got this gang sitting on this table, um, that gang on that table, and people just throwing bags at each other. Yeah. So, in the end, they completely stopped that, and they actually had feeding on each and every wing. Oh, right. So, there's, oh, like, okay. about, an 80, 80, about 80 prisoners on each wing. So that actually served them on each wing because that was such a volatile time. Yeah. yeah. That you know that could go off. And um, they split it in the end. But if it did kick off, you had like uh, alarm bells on the wing. So you'd hit alarm bell, be like, let's go in here. There's only f- there's four prison officers working with 80 prisoners on here. <sighs> so, yeah, and that's what the split was. And then in the end, um, there was cutbacks and they cut us down to three. Jesus. There's actually 72 on the wing to be like the exact numbers. It's three so people, three of guards to 72 prisoners. Yeah. Jesus. And you, you know, and if I kicked off, you hit the alarm bell. And I think there was probably, I think there's about 10 wings. Yeah. So you'd have like a designated runner, prison officer from each of these wings to attend the alarm oh, no. bell, wherever it was. But you used to get them like at tea time, fuck about with them. Like the, even the prisoners would hit the alarm bells themselves. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And that would come over like your radio alarm bell, Bravo wing, and you'd be like, somebody would be darting over to the wing, and there'd be nothing going on. But sometimes that could be a bit of a diversionary tactic. Yeah. 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 So right. you know, have like nothing going on there, and that'd be kicking off on the actual wing you were on. You know. Fucking hell! Was there ever? Because you say you know three guards, seventy-two prisoners. It wouldn't take much, you know, for, I don't want to say take you hostage, but, you know, it wouldn't take much for 72 guys to overthrow three people. Mm. Was Absolutely that ever a thing? Not. No? Well, that's, that's kind of what got you through your day, really, was like the good rapport oh, wow. you had with the prisoners. You know, I'm not saying that you you gave into every, everything that they requested because there obviously was an us and them situation, as you'd expect. Yeah. But the kind of good rapport that you had with the prison has kind of got you through the day, you know, yeah. and mm. if can I say you befriended some, but if you kind of like had a, like a handful of prisoners that you got on really well with, yeah, yeah, they yeah. kind of give you a bit of a heads up, you know, if they said, just so you know, governor, it's getting a little bit lumpy on a twos landing lately, you know, just, just watch yourself up there. Uh, okay. You know, they give you a bit of a heads up because at the end of the day, these guys have got to live in that. Yeah. They, they don't want shit after shit every day, you know, mm. so. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of the good rapport that got you through it, you know. And I like to think when I was there, I did have a, a bit of a good rapport with the guys. I was saying I gave in at every whim. I was kind of like firm but fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, know, you, know, I'd, you know, I'd treat them as I'd, 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 I'd expect it to be treated. You know? There you go, lads. Here's the Marmite. Here's the oranges. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Got some, got, some, got some medicine as well, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. So that's quite interesting that you say, you know, good rapport. There, there must have been a balance because obviously you hear a term, which I was going to ask you later um, if it's true, you know, the whole, uh, not to say that this was what they they were but snitches get stitches you know if it, these for the prisoners themselves there must have been a balance of like you know i want to get on with the prison guards but i can't be seen to be too overly friendly because then it might isolate me etc is that kind of a balance that needed to be struck um yeah definitely like you wherever you went you you always had a grass on each and every week there'd always yeah, be a grass on there. whether they were doing it for their own benefit or or what you know which was nine times out of ten because they'd want to go to a lower category prison yeah. So they always felt that if they were like giving information out, um, that would always help them. And uh, just just for an example, like mobile phones were kind of rife in prison when I was there. Yeah. Uh, either getting thrown over the fence, the prisoners <laughs> were picking them up on exercise, or they were getting smuggled in through visits. Mm. And this particular occasion, um, we had some information, which is basically just a a posh term to say that somebody's just grasped on somebody. Yeah. He told me that this particular prisoner had a mobile phone. So I was like, okay, yeah. So you sort of like do the correct paperwork, which which is an absolute fucking nightmare in the prison. <laughs> and then you go and 
what they call spin this guy's cell with him in there. So he got to this guy's cell and he said, look, I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuck you, but I'm not going to lie to you. With that information, that you've got a mobile phone in your cell. We can either start upsetting all your, all your belongings in your cell, turning upside down. And I don't mean like fucking Shawshank Redemption, knocking everything off the cells. <laughs> you know, you'd have a bit of respect for the guy's cell. So you'd start with a strip search on him and for decency, what it be like you'd see on the TV where they'd be standing there bollock naked. You'd start with the top half first, leave their trousers on, then put the top half back on. Yeah. Then you'd do the trousers. And there'd always be two of you there, two prison officers. Just so you're not open to fucking allegations of this yeah. guy's just touch me up, you know, and all this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this particular time we're searching this guy who we've been informed has got this mobile phone. And as we sort of strip searching him, I'm like, yeah, if you could put your jumper on, if we start with the bottom half. We heard this kind of muffled ringtone of like, (laughs) (laughs) and me and this other prison officer are looking at each other and I'm like, well, that's not my phone. I haven't got a phone of you. And this this prison, I'm like, look, mate, I said, you've obviously got a phone on you. Where is it? He went, look, governor, he said, I up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> this phone, he said, can you just give me a minute? He said, and I'll, and I'll fucking get out. I'm like, yeah, no worries. So we've got like these fucking evidence bags and all this oh. stuff. And I'm sort of stood outside the cell. And me and this other guy, this other prisoner, I said, like, our arms folded, waiting for this guy, a hand is this phone. And you can hear the pain in this, this, this fucking guy taking his phone. Oh, out. my. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't really care how much pain you're in at the minute because... I'm going to have to handle this fucking phone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something I really don't want to do. So I've got this evidence bag. He's pulled the phone out, popped the phone in the bag. Obviously, you can imagine the state of this fucking phone. <laughs> you sort of seal the bag up and you place the guard report and then it goes in front of a, a local district judge who's going to obviously give him out of time for it. But this particular guy who I'm talking about here, a day later, he came down to the office and he's he looks ill. He looks really ill. He's sweating, he's fucking grey. And he said to me, he said, can I have a word of you in confidence? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, um, you know that phone I took out the other day? I was like, yeah. He said, well, since I've done that, he said, I feel really ill. I'm like, what? He said, I've got really bad stomach pains, really bad stomach cramps. So as you've got healthcare in each prison, I report this to the healthcare. They're doing like an abdomen check on this guy. And I said, um, you're going to have to take him out to hospital. You know, he's going to have to go to hospital. I'm like, what? Ambulance jobby or can we just take him ourselves? They went, you can take him, but obviously this guy needs to be going to hospital quick. So we take him to hospital. They give him an X-ray. And when you're giving him an X-ray, you have to go in there, obviously, with him because you're cuffed up to this guy. Yeah. And looking on this X-ray, you could see like this uh, <laughs> fucking wire going up like his intestine. Oh, God. And I'm like, stood there. And I'm like, said to this uh, guy's doing the X-ray, I'm like, going. What the fuck is that there? And he went, um, that looks like a piece of wire. I'm like, uh, yeah, it does. And this piece of wire must have been, I don't know, 20 inches long. Oh, and I said to this kind of charger said, or something. So what the fuck is that? He went, yeah, he said, I pulled the charger out of the plug so I could just hardwire oh. into the top. And he had the charger up his ass as well. What? Oh, oh my God. God. Fuck So I'm like hell. saying to this, this, this X ray, and there's a doctor there, and I'm like, you know, what are we going to do about this guy? You know, is he like, is he like in serious trouble? And they went, we're just going to have to let nature take its course and have to uh, come out the other end. You know, it's just, shit out of charge. It's, it's a mad situation. Yeah. He got, he got yeah. charged for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a, a butt plug. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. He just needed yeah. silent as well, didn't he? Yeah. If he had silent on his phone, <laughs> he would have yeah. been fine. Put it on silent, stick it on vibrate. <laughs> 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 oh my god that's fucking it was obviously you know uh contraband up the ass was quite common i'm guessing oh yeah all the time yeah like them they had something in the prison what they called a boss chair so anyone that came in they had to sit on this chair and the best way to describe this chair is you know like uh, these electric gaming chairs that you have you know where you kind of hold oh hold the handles and it yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. it looked like that so they'd sit on this chair and at this chair and actually indicate whether they had anything sort of like uh secreted in the rectum you know? <laughs> so if they had something in there they'd be like you're not going on normal location we're going to put you in the segregation you're not on your own until you hand to us what you've got secreted up your ass. fuck what was, the, what was the craziest thing did you ever see like a 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Sorry. So you you uh, you finished in 2014, didn't you? You were there for 11 years. So yeah. 2003. I'm trying to think of the size of the phones in the early 2000s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have I mean, that, that charger was probably Nokia. like that big. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever have a big old Nokia come out or anything like that? Yeah, uh, Nokia 3310 was kind of like the phone of choice. Uh, it's yeah. indestructible, that one. So I bet, I bet <laughs> they love it now. You, know? you can get a tiny little phone. Yeah, yeah pop out. That'd be a right nightmare. Yeah. I can probably take three. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, early phones. You oh, were, uh, yeah. Right. Early <laughs> Being in prison in oh. the late 90s. Oh. Oh. Oh, imagine if it was a flip phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> those, fa- those first phones where you needed the battery pack as well. Oh, <laughs> Not the battery pack. The big antennas. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear! Was um, it's just you know we're we're on the bum. We'll stay on the bum. So what? what <laughs> other than phones, you know, what what sort of stuff was there? Like a lot of drugs would be yeah secreted up yeah. there, you know, because some of these guys are heroin addicts. Yeah, you know, and these they're coming in with you know, heroin shoved up their backside, cannabis, you know, and I'm I'm quite happy to say you know I wouldn't say I take the blind eye to cannabis, but. If the cons are smoking cannabis on the wing, you don't really mind too much because that kind of mellow these people out. But yeah, yeah. When there's things like crack cocaine and heroin, mm. which I'd really call a sort of like a filthy drug. Yeah. That that uh, presents its own problems with like people getting in debt. You know, they're struggling when they can't get the gear and, you know, they're just a complete fucking nightmare, you know, then. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, because I guess, you know, once they become... Or oh, they already are obviously dependent on these these drugs, and then like you say uh, about getting into debt. But can you go into more detail as to like what that actually entails? You know, being in debt for drugs in prison. Yeah, sometimes you know, like I'll start like with inside the walls of the prison, if you like. They'd be getting in debt in prison where they'd be say like these guys could be on prescribed medication. It'd be like you get your medication every Friday. You now owe me that medication. I'm having that, and then that medication would be sold on by a dealer in the prison. Um, tobacco was a big currency. I yeah. think smoke is actually banned now yeah, in, the, in, the, in the prison system. Um, but smoking like tobacco was a big thing. Um, they never used to buy cigarettes because cigarettes even back then were quite expensive. So like hand rolling tobacco was a big currency because every Friday in the prison, they'd have what they call a canteen. Mm-hmm. So a week before you'd get a sheet and on this sheet would be like tobacco, crisps, sweets, just kind of like your local corner shop stuff. Yeah. And they'd be able to buy things, you know, within prison. But that weren't kind of like funded by the taxpayer. That'd be like what they'd earn by being in prison. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I touched on earlier, these guys at work and they earn mm-hmm. about £10 a week. A week? You know? Yeah. yeah it's and what, are they, what sort of hours are they doing? Uh, they're going, they're leaving the, the cells at half eight in the morning. They'd come back about 12 for lunch. Mm-hmm. We'd lock them up over lunch. Then they'd go back about half past one till about quarter five. So they're doing you know, a full day. Yeah. It's full shift. I mean, yeah, they're yeah. prisoners, so, you know, yeah, but yeah, but yeah so was just the, surprising to Was the price inflated? Obviously, they're only in 10 a week. Was it like, you know, two, um, two pounds for a Freddo? Was. Or, was it, or was it sort of similar? Yeah. Was that like, you know, prison tax? Or? Cool, early 2000s when a Freddo was actually 5p. Oh, yeah. the, the golden days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but was it like, yeah. I see ten, what you mean. Could, would a tenner go, I that mean. That far. Yeah. Yeah. Tobacco's, tobacco was quite cheap, you know, and I would say that was a lot cheaper than it was on the street, but it's probably about two or three pounds cheaper. Okay. Than what yeah, we, yeah. You know, whether that's kind of some sort of tax loophole wow. the prison system use, I, I don't know. Yeah. But you'd have actually like uh, like auxiliary prison staff working in this canteen. It would like, because you couldn't have prisoners working in a canteen because there's like Mars bars, anything yeah. you can find in a corner shop. So that was kind of like, you just can't trust anyone to work in, in the canteen. So you did hand their canteen sheet in, and some of them, some of the prisoners would actually take the piss. So you'd get the auxiliary staff ring you up from the canteen on the ring, on the wing, and they'd be saying, like, I've got fucking Smithy's canteen sheet in here. He wants 1,001 <laughs> penny shoes. He can fuck off if he can come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that, you know, so, you know, but they'd probably just do it for a bit of a laugh. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then, yeah. And then, like, the small things to a prison would be like, you're not having that many, mate. It's just ridiculous. Well, I've got the money. I want it, you know. And then I just yeah. involve a keg off a bunch of penny tunes, you know. Was it cash that they were back then? No, they kind of like, so say, like, if you had, if you knew somebody Credits. was in prison, you could send money in, like, postal orders back then, checks, yeah. so like, cash. And then I'd go, like, onto, like, an electronic system of their account. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you was, like, a basic prisoner where you was a pain in the ass, and you kind of had, like, 
no privileges. I think he had about three pound a week to spend. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you as a standard prisoner, which was like you just doing kind of everything that's expected of you, I think you had about eight pound a week back then. And then if you as a, what they call an enhanced prisoner, where you've kind of like get the more kind of privileges, these guys I think had about fifteen pound a week to spend. And fifteen pound a week, you know, it was quite a lot of money to spend in jail. Really, when all they yeah, do is buy yeah. and sweets and yeah, kind of snacks. Yeah, yeah. Dan's so excited now. There's a level system in there. I was like, I Dan's like, like what, what do I need to get to enhance level here? Yeah, he loves it. If it's a tier system, he do wants to get a top. certificate or... Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, no, even if, you, yeah. if it's chocolate as well, I, yeah. I mean, I'd be... I don't, oh, yeah. Even if I had to be a grass, I'd be like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I want that chocolate, mate. Yeah, like, tax free as well, by the sounds of it. Johnny's got a phone, mate. And uh, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the mafia. I don't care, mate. I need my Mars bar. It's so bizarre. Finds out it's not up there, but Dan's just like... Got his Mars bar. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. Oh dear, oh Amazing. dear. So you're saying about and this might you know put a slight um, uh, take a slight negative turn for Dan, unfortunately. But with this tiered system, with the enhanced prisoners, they're getting 15 quid a week. Blah blah blah. Would they be almost the targets of potential? You know, um, oh well, you get 15 quid a week if you don't give me your shit. Blah blah blah. Or is it was it all yeah, secret? There would, there would be bullying going on for that kind of thing but most of these enhanced prisoners are guys that kind of like knew how to do their time really yeah. you know they were like like the kind of what I call the experienced prison you know they knew how to play the game yeah, yeah. most of the life sentence prisoners I had were enhanced prisoners and that was always like a good uh, kind of character dangle really to the guys that were on basic but some of these lads that were on basic they were like the real proper didn't care pain in the arse yeah, you know? yeah they, don't they, they fun, would yeah. never conform they never had a telly in their cell. They're never going to get it. Yeah. Um, they're locked up 23 hours a day. They get their, they get their half hours exercise. They get half hour association, which is like their time out of cell. And the, and the guys on basic, they kind of like had everything that the basic guys got, but they'd have a telly in their cell, but they didn't have as much money to spend. And they couldn't use as much uh, money as they wanted on the phone. So obviously you've got pay oh, phones course, in the jail. Yeah. yeah. And that's obviously they work on a pin phone system, so they can like log in on their pin phone, put their pin in, use the phone and phone home and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, the enhanced prisoners they had like the playstations as well. Oh wow! Yeah, they yeah they had, Dan's like, well in. Dan's, Dan's gonna, in. after this part, he's committing a crime. Dan's like I'm enhanced you. Yeah, tier system. I'm going for a, tier, yeah. tier system. I'm going for a life. Pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to I, be I, fair, if you're doing life, like I say, you probably want. You want to you want to make it as comfortable as possible. You're there for life. Like you know, you're not going. Yeah. Anywhere, you're not getting out. So you're gonna probably, uh, like you say, you're probably more likely to, unless you're an absolute psycho, yeah. you're more likely to conform and just, like, yeah. yeah, go on with it. I guess to, you know those privileges they mean a lot to you because you're never getting out. Yeah. And I also, I also remember like, when you were taking me around the prison, you were showing me the life as cells. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've been in worse hotel rooms. Yeah. They weren't too bad, were they? <laughs> On yeah, that. all right. Yeah, yeah. I've, um, I've got a really like, interesting question. And it's, it's something like, I've always thought if I ever went into prison, because you, you question yourself, you know, if I ever get go into prison or whatever, what would I do? Mm. Yeah. How should I act? Like I say, we've got someone here who knows the ins and outs. Yeah. What would you... If you was, if you yeah. was to ever go in and it was like how how would you how would you sort of what would be your uh, demeanor sort of, tip, yeah. tips to survive yeah t- yeah. yeah like what, yeah. yeah what what's the you know you, for any for any seen... listeners that are now going to do a stretch no I'm just because you know like <laughs> yeah, thing, no, I know exactly thing, what you mean things mate. happen in life don't they hundred percent and, and, and yeah, there's, yeah. there's things happen in life and you can end up in situations and it's like loads everyone's probably scared of prison and it's probably yeah. a question we all go through it's like you know how would you approach um, or what advice would you give to someone if they were to ever go in their first time? Do you go in and try and fight the hardest guy? Do you keep your head down? Do you... What's the best way? I think Jimmy's yeah. got a court case coming up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best? No, it's all, no I'm always... Yeah, because it's like, yeah. you know, we're scared of these things, but if you know if you know a fucking couple of tips... That's you it. Know, maybe, maybe you uh, start committing a few more crimes. <laughs> <laughs> the best, like I was just saying, the news guys come in, I said, yeah, I know it's probably a bit of a cliche, you can't expect me to say this, but come in here, keep yourself to yourself. Just do your time, do what the, the screws on a wing are asking you to do. If you get a job in the prison, go to work when you don't be late for work. Keep yourself to yourself, it's in your time will fly, you know, and 
I know no one wants to appear as a grasp. I said, if you do end up getting any shit on the wing, let me know. But once once that snowball starts going, are you getting shot on the wing? That's just that's basically game over for them because if you if you show like a bit of weakness, I'm yeah, not saying go yeah. Yeah. fight with everybody. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Like with the weakness thing, because yeah, you yeah. know we, we get watch, bullies, don't we, you? Yeah, we yeah, watch, yeah, we watch. I mean, we probably we, we watch American, so that yeah, might be. They, I'm they, not sure if that's any worse to the to the British or, or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like I say, when you watch these British series and stuff, and the, there's always a bully, and, yeah. and I imagine that's you know that that doesn't come from nowhere. There probably are bullies in there. It's like oh, how yeah. you know. How how much do you defend yourself? Yeah, because they've got a thing called. You yeah. know, you don't want to you don't want to start caving the the nuss's head in or whatever because you, you know you know you're in there with that guy for probably a long time. So, mm. it, it, uh, is it like a balancing act with you know don't don't show too much weakness but don't you know. But like, give, um, don't get me wrong. Like when when you've got a bully, you know, on a wing that you're working on, most prison officers kind of weed that bully out straight away. Yeah. And, okay. yeah. Yeah. If, if there's a bully on a wing, you know that's going to be one person this day, another person the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, okay. And that's causing your daily job to be an absolute pile of shit. Yeah. So you're going to do all you can to get rid of the bully off the wing, you know. So, But it does go on, you know, and you, you're going to a bully cell and they'd be like all like the protein shakes sitting on the windowsill. <laughs> there'd be like 20 pouches of tobacco and you'd be like well how'd you get all that mate because I didn't see you ordered out on your canteen sheet yeah yeah. and then they're kind of like you know because they're living in a cell which is basically like five by three there's not many places where they can hide things like that you know yeah. so if they're saying I've been saving it up and I've not been you just you can weed a bully out straight away and yeah. I say most staff will want them off the wing where they'll be in a segregation unit then they'll get what they call ghosted to another prison so they'll like be transferred and most of these guys and his prisoners are basically getting ghosted from jail to jail to jail just because they can't conform and they're a pain in the ass yeah. wherever they go. That's that's good that I like yeah. that. Because like I say that I think that's I mean I don't know whether it's put out there to obviously stop people from committing crime. Yeah. Because like, you know, they want to make the 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 view of prison as, as bad as it possibly can be. So yeah. so that we are good and whatnot. But like when you're in there you'd you'd think you know you would want to it's probably not as bad. Like it's it's bad, but what I'm saying yeah. is, it's like the whole snitches get stitches thing. Yeah. And that you know, if something is really bad, it's like you don't want to do something that's going to give you more time. Or yeah. you know, yeah. dealing probably with the prison guards is probably the best way, really. And that's but like I say, there's, there's, there's this, like, there is this thing out there, isn't there? That you know, yeah. you, there's a stigma about. Yeah, it, I mean, for you know, sure. if someone beats you up, it's like, well, do what do I do? Do I yeah. talk to someone? It must be must be awful, like yeah. psychologically, to 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 make that decision because it's like you don't, you know, do you want to come across as a snitch? Do you want to come across as weak? The best yeah. way is, you know, let the people in charge deal with what's going on. Yeah. Um, but then again, you know, you're not. It's not holiday. You are there. Yeah. You yeah. are there for for. But you would get lads with like bruises on their face, you know, as a cliche as it is. You used to say to them, what's happened to your face, mate? Oh, well, I fell down the stairs or I fell in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from, you know, because if they knew that, you know, they've got visible injuries and next thing you know, yeah, you're going to that guy's cell, the, yeah. uh, the guy who's done it, you're going to take him out of his cell. Everybody on that wing knows that this lad has grassed up. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. You know, I mean, it must be awful if you're in a cell with someone. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, like, there's no yeah. escape, is there? No, exactly. And, and, uh, that's awful. And in in the, uh, I will have one more question before, but in the second half, I do just for all the v- viewers' of discretion, etc. I do, I do want to take this in a slightly darker turn to the more nasty sides of prison yeah, in the yeah, second half. Yeah. But my last question, going off of the back of what Jim's asking, that is, you know, you say keep your head down, etc. Being brutally honest, how easy is it to actually do that? Do you know what I mean? Because it, it, to keep yourself to yourself in that. But if 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 someone turns their fucking you know their attention to you, what can you really do? There's not a lot you can do if you if you're perfectly honest, and that's why you get like a lot of problem with gang culture in prison. Yeah, you know if the, these lads are like first timers. I think if I go associate myself with this gang, they're going to take me, under you know, wing. under their wing. Yeah, you know, yeah. you get like, and you know, and, and unfortunately, as it is, you get in a kind of lot of gangs that are kind of like. Like race related, you get a lot yeah. of like uh, Muslim gangs that are sticking together. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, Jamaican Yardi gangs that are sticking together. Yeah, and obviously you get like the white lads that stick together as well. You know, yeah. so that's kind of like gang culture, and 
that's kind of like the old wolf pack mentality where our strength in numbers, you know, which is a, uh, which is no way you're going to get out of that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm absolutely yeah. loving this here. Yeah, here this is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. What yeah. we're going to do is we're going to take it to a break. And then when we come back as a warning, I'm going to ask about the elephant in the room that apparently happens in the showers. So, so everyone's aware. Okay. We will see you in the second half. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> we doing we're back with mike you're still here you're still here and as i warned you we're gonna go deeper and darker into the the i mean it's been pretty nasty so far i mean fucking rumble in the grumble grumble in the rum, rumble rumble in the grumble rumble in the grumble yeah. i wouldn't have wanted to be there i mean but yeah. we're gonna go even more now so uh yeah michael if you could go into the more horrific side of of, of prison and I think to start off uh, I, w- I would like an, a question answered because in the documentaries in the movies in the in the series you know prison break um, you are, you hear that you know if you're a paedophile or you've sexually assaulted a woman or whatever you're like target numero uno like you're fucked is that as as prevalent and, and as severe as they say you know what I mean if, if you've gone in there as a paedophile are you just you're you're done. Yeah, you kind of like just waiting for the inevitable to happen. Really, if you're a paedophile, you know, and probably a lot of people would thank me for saying that. But anyone who's probably still working in the in the service now, if you're like, well, no, that's that's true. And yeah, if you get a paedophile come in, they're running scared. You know, they're obviously telling all the other prison they're locked up with that they're in for something else. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, they're obviously telling them they're in for fraud, which is usually the first thing that would come into somebody's mind. Mm-hmm. But paedophiles are prevalent in, in jail, you know, and sometimes they will have to go in a kind of like general prisons, but there are dedicated sex offenders prisons, but you would get the odd one or two that would um, would come up into the jail that I was working in, yeah. And what, what was that? See that... Obviously, it's, it, for some reason, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a, a controversial... Uh, thing even though i i just i mean pedophiles pizza they're they're probably the you know pedophiles and rapists let's, let's be brutally honest they're like the lowest of the fucking low yeah, aren't they you know yeah. and and it's almost well it is it pisses me off that they would have special treatment to have their own fucking wings you know at the end of the day you've gone to prison uh for what you, you've done wrong and 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 to not be molly coddled but to be have special treatment especially for something as as deplorable as that is is um yeah that's that's fucking ridiculous but what what would happen for those that shall we say aren't fucking lucky enough to have the special treatment to be put on these wings so the ones that are in with the riffraff yeah like one that obviously springs to mind straight away was a uh a guy used to lock up and he was an ex-public schoolboy headmaster. I know that sounds really sort of stereotypical, stereotypical, but he was, and this guy was just in complete denial. And you could just tell from the off that he had absolutely no remorse that he'd done to these young guys, you know, which is, yeah. I know you said yourself, it's pretty dark and that's not very nice to speak about, but this guy just had absolutely no remorse. And yeah, he spoke very well, you know, like the typical, typical stereotypical headmaster. Yeah. This particular day, I'm sat in a wing office. I'm on the computer doing manager paperwork. And this this guy comes up to the office door and he said, um, knocks on the door quite polite. I'm like, yeah, what's up? He went, I, I've just been attacked. So I'm like this, I went, and obviously, you know, a, a paedophile, a sex offender, even though you've got to be professional yeah. as a prison officer, You've still got that niggling of course. conscience down in your mind that yeah. you haven't got no time for this fucker. Yeah, yeah. So he's there and he's like, I've just been attacked. And I probably just look at him and I can't hide the contempt I've got in my face for this guy. And I'm like, what's happened then? He went, well, um, I've been attacked by a group of boys. And I'm like, look, there's no boys on this wing. Everyone is a man on this wing. You know, mm-hmm. stop referring to 
you know, because that's the whole kind of like weird yeah, yeah. second yeah, 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 yeah. Which I kind of want to stand out of this guy. And he's like, um, well, I've just been attacked. I went, well, I said, I can't see a mark on you. He said, well, I don't think they could have been terribly fucking bright, these boys, because they stuck a plastic bin over my head and were punching the bin. <laughs> so oh, I'm fucking like, knob. And, and I'm like, okay. I said, well, I said, if they're punching you and had a bin over your head, you're not going to be able to identify them, are you? He's like, well, I know exactly who they are. I said, how do you know who they are? You can't identify these people. I said, I'm not prepared to do anything about it. He said, well, I know what you should do. You should get these boys and split them up like I used to. I said, look, we've been over this. They're not boys. Don't refer them as boys. Yeah. I said, what do you want me to do about it? And he said, well, I've just told you what I want you to do. I said, I'm not prepared to act on the information you've just given me. Uh-huh. So he goes back upstairs, all the prisoners are out of association and walking in and out of each other's cells, playing pool, darts, all that good stuff. Ten minutes later, I'm on the computer and this guy comes back down to the office again, quite polite, knocks on the door again. And he went, I've just been attacked again. And I'm kind of like, I'm busy. I've lost my patience with this guy, but I'm looking at the computer screen and he's like in my right peripheral. Yeah. And all I turn around and snap at him, I say, I've told you earlier. And as I look at him, this guy's got a detached retina. Oh, and his yeah. eyes basically hanging down his fucking cheek. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, and this guy's obviously in shock because he's come at the office door yeah. completely calm and his, his eyes completely fucking hanging out. And, you know, as, as, as kind of selfish as it seems, you think, fuck me, this guy's come down here. He, he said something earlier about being reported. Right, yeah. How is this going to fucking come back on me or the prison system? Yeah. You know, it's but, but you kind of like document everything you've done. He's gave no evidence yeah. of being attacked. And this guy actually, I think he ended up losing partial sight out of his eye for this. Uh, but uh, you good. imagine like yeah, a gruesome good, yeah. of like a, yeah. a fucking horror movie of somebody's eye hanging out. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the wires, if you like, are hanging there. And that's, that's a thought that really won't sort of fucking leave me, to be honest. Yeah. At least oh, it was, yeah. it warms my blood. To be fair, would it? It was yeah. like, it was him. No, it was like, yeah, in a horror film. Like if, remorse, yeah, the guy's a paedophile, you don't really care, do you? Yeah. I'm sure, it, I'm sure the psychological damage and physical damage will pale in comparison to what he's done to oh, mate, his yeah. victims. So. What did you pass yeah. out from that, though? Sure, it depends. Shock's very yeah. strange, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Very strange. You can... Like, I mean, oh, the fact yeah. that he's walked to a fucking door yeah, and politely gone, I've been yeah. attacked again. Yeah, I've had my arm <laughs> snapped, bone hanging out, hang dangling on and... Just yeah. yeah, completely, completely conscious. So yeah, it's very. Funny. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's that's. What did you did you uh, find out like how it it came to be detected? Like was he smacked over the head with a pull cue? Or? They just basically they just pummeled this guy really, you know. Yeah. Because they they didn't know he was a paedophile. They didn't find out he was a paedophile, but. I'm not saying this guy was wandering around a wing looking like Jimmy Savile, but yeah, uh, yeah. He, he looked like a paedophile, you know. Yeah, he yeah. Like a, a paedophile, so I think they've kind of put yeah, two and two, two together. together and thought, yeah. fuck it, let's just do an educated guess and let's have this guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was there any other examples of, you know, people like that? Uh, yeah, you used to get, like, people that are in for, like, cruelty, uh, cruelty to children. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, you know, they're beating up children, and I mean, like, as young as, like, as babies, which is absolutely yeah. horrific. Yeah. I, that's, that's, I, it'd be yeah. so hard to detach from that. Yeah. It fucking makes my my blood boil, especially having kids. It, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, a yeah, fair play to for, for even, yeah, just like, I, it would just, I know, just yeah. like something like that, like, you know, like as you see, like probably on porridge where the guys have got like the pastry. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And stuff. They've known paedophiles before get like the pastry model. And get like an Argos catalogue of a child and put oh, it over the oh, like, oh, it's, yeah. it's fucking horrendous, isn't it? You know, yeah, it's just yeah. absolutely awful. You know, and obviously the, the the prison staff will be taking that down. Yeah. They will be placing these guys on report. And then when it comes to their probation here and oh, yeah, they'll be fine. And they're yeah. doing things like that, they're still a fucking threat. So yeah, these yeah. guys are gonna be coming out, you know. But like I used to work with staff, you know, like at the time where they'd have like newborn babies and they're logging up these horrible sex offenders and I'm working with these guys and they're like saying to me, oh, you got them in? I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's up? They went, I was bathing my daughter last night and I just had to fucking stop. I'm like, yeah. 
boy, what's up? Because he said, oh, you know, because of that twat on here, you know, he said, yeah. couldn't get out of my head. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's, you know, even everyone who says in any work of life, don't ever take your work home, but oh, in that so hard. Retrospect, it's hard to like, leave that at the gate, yeah. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, I mean, we'll quickly tap on, if, if you're happy to, um, you know, tap into that now, as you've just mentioned it, that was a question I was going to have, you know, with that kind of job, the sort of things that you see, how hard for you personally and you don't have to answer this, Mike, if you don't want to, we'll move on. How hard was that personally for you? You know, could you detach? Did you, you know, often take that home or? Um, I think sometimes you, you would take it home, yeah, you know, but I think the kind of way you take it home would be like, hang on a minute, I'm at work again tomorrow at half seven, I've got to deal with that guy again mm. tomorrow. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like, think, I'm only going home for like 12 hours and I've got to be back in there tomorrow dealing with this guy, this this paedophile who I know yeah. that he's in there for and I've got to watch my tongue around the other staff because if any of the other prisoners hear what this guy's in for yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know there's a world of shit over. even though like you've got to try and act professional you've got a duty of care to this guy yeah that's that's such a hard thing oh, to fucking, do you know? oh, like, I can't imagine you, you know like even older staff that I work with prison officers you know years ago they probably would have gave this guy a fucking tank and you know themselves yeah. but yeah you know, and you probably would look, you know, some staff would look for the excuse to kind of kind of have it with them, if you like, but yeah. then kind of days have gone, you know. Yeah. What, yeah. what about um, abusing animals as well? Is that a similar sort of treatment? Do, do prisoners get a similar? Not really, because um, like the abuse of animals, I never kind of saw it because the prison I worked in was a Category B prison and then it obviously changed to a Category C. You've got four categories of prison, A, which is like your real heavy prisoners. Mm -hmm. Then you've got your B, which is also heavy. Yeah. Then C, which is still kind of like nasty people. Then your cat D, which is your open prison. But all these categories, at some point in the prison system, these guys will all have been a cat A. Yeah, yeah. At some point within their prison system, you know. But kind of like animal cruelty, I didn't really see. You know, they've probably gone to a... Cat D. not saying like their prison system and the justice system would condone that, but... I know They'd probably mean. go to a lower yeah. category prison, you know, to yeah. start with. Yeah. So obviously, um, just while yeah talking about things like that, obviously, so being for sex offenders, um, obviously, you know, top primary targets. What like after that? It's sort of like what you don't really want to be in for. Because whenever I think of what, you know, that's the sort of primary thing. What's like the next kind of, oh, you're you're a target? You know, do, do they care about like, I don't know, oh, you're a tax evader, you piece of shit. I pay my taxes, let's, let's have it. You know, what's, what's, you know, what's sort of like that? <laughs> now, they're kind of like what I'd say the next one down is obviously like you've got your, your child beaters that are in there, uh -huh. you know. And then obviously you've got like the women beaters that have been in there that as soon as I've had 10 points down a pub on a Friday night, they're coming over there. Yeah, they take that on the misses, and there'd be guys that would be running scared. Yeah, of course. And believe it or not, you know, I'd lock guys up that are actually locked up for like severely beating their misses. And on the visit, their wife would still come up and visit yeah, them. You know, yeah, and you're just yeah. like, my God, love, what are you fucking doing? You know. Yeah. What was um what was visiting time? Like, was it, is it, because I, you, it's probably different for different prisons, because I, you know, you see in the movie, sometimes they're behind a screen with a phone, other yeah. times they're just, you know, tables in the middle of a room. What's like, what's the, what's the crack there? Well, they used to have their visits on a, on a Saturday afternoon and on a Sunday afternoon, and I think they were about two hours. Oh, okay. Quite um, long. It, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm sure it was about two hours. It was definitely no, uh, no longer than that, but that's one a lot shorter than that. And that kind of would be a table in the room. Yeah. But they'd have to sit, opposite each other on this table like they could make they could kiss and embrace and all that good stuff you know yeah um but used to get we used to get a particular woman come in and she used to be smuggling drugs in yeah, yeah. inside yeah. herself yeah and we know she was doing it but you can't like be strict and if that used to have a prison dog and if the dog didn't indicate that she had drugs on her she's coming in because yeah. you can't lawfully use that visit and what she used to do was she used to go up to the little tea hut kiosk in the visit room. She'd have her back to the camera. She would pull the drugs out of her vagina. She'd get a can of drink. And then she'd have it in this, this in her thumb there. And as right. she opened the can of drink, she'd drop it in the can of drink. She'd give it to the guy she was visiting. He'd drink the can of drink, swallow the drugs. Uh, okay. Shit, no way you're in a way you go, you know? Fucking hell. That's crazy. Resourceful, isn't that? Like, let's say, people in prison... Get so, very resourceful. Does it yeah. not split in your stomach, though? 
Does it not like? It depends what on if how it dissolves? It, what if it dissolves in your stomach? It depends on how it's wrapped. Yeah, like, yeah, it, that's, that's the gamble that they're prepared to take, you know, because that's not just the need that they need that drugs, but that could also be very lucrative. Yeah, for yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, drugs on the street compared to prison are worth five, six, seven times as much. You know. Yeah. Was, is, there, was is, there ever? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, is that something they train you to spot? Like, if you like, can spot drugs being smuggled in. Yeah, you know, like uh, I've I've said it loads of times. Like you can you can tell somebody's body language, and mm. kind of when you've done that job for a few years, you can you can read people's body language straight away. You know, now like I said, that's that's crazy. But if I'm in a shop now, like even like in a big supermarket, if somebody's on the robin there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can spot it straight away. Yeah, there. Like, yeah. I was saying to Mrs. I see that woman about Alfie. You know, she just stuck something down her trousers and really and be like, you just spot it a mile away, and that was. Yeah. Just something that you kind of get, but not like being streetwise, but this is just something you pick up, you know. Okay. Crazy, crazy. So with that woman who uh, obviously everyone kind of caught on to what she was doing, was there ne- never any like form of prosecution or? Nothing, because you couldn't prove it. Like you're talking like a grainy video camera film yeah. and that, and you're yeah. trying to, they're trying to zoom in on this can of drink. Yeah. But they're putting like a small bag of, heroin or whatever in a can of drink, you know, you think yeah. how small a hole is in a can yeah, of drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, You know, yeah. and they're trying to zoom in on a grainy picture. And if that goes to court, yeah, that's, that's what what be an unreasonable date that that's, there's something in there. And she could yeah. be saying, oh, I dropped a sugar cube in there because he likes his drink sweeter or something, yeah. you know. And, yeah. You know, and there's just going to be no hard conviction there for it. God, that's absolutely that's absolutely crazy because obviously it's not like you were saying earlier about the drug situation. You know, for the for the worst drugs that that change people in a negative, you know, in a more negative way than than the marijuana, which obviously just like chills people out. You know, you're almost battling that, and then you know that there are people bringing it in, and there's nothing you can do about it. But you think, well, fucking, hell, I've got to deal with you know the cunt that's on that in in a, in like Thank tomorrow. You, yeah. yeah. Did you ever have spice, or was that later? Yeah, that just started to come out when I left the prison system. That was like then coming in, like yeah, that was like a real new thing. Like that was that was a real strange drug. That was like they would you'd get guys come down and they were like, once that was like a cocaine buzz at the time, but that was just like a they were just odd on it, and you'd be thinking, what the hell's going on here? What yeah. are these guys? You know, you just thought in the, in the beginning that they were like taking a large amount of prescribed drugs like tramadol or cocodamol, and um. The thing with spice is that at the time the drug dogs couldn't pick up on that. Yeah. Because it was obviously a legal high that they, they could buy, like well not prisoners could buy, but the drug dogs couldn't detect on that. So that was coming over the fence. That was coming in through the mail. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh sort of touching on the mail, like uh one particular year when it was Christmas time, this prisoner had a, a Christmas card sent in from his door. And on this Christmas card, she'd made this Christmas card herself. And that was a snowman, and you had like two eyes, you know. Oh, you know drugs. And one of the, um, the two eyes on there were two trips, two <laughs> LSD trips. You're joking. So, yeah. Uh. Yeah. So, like, you know, and, you know, like, in, like what you said earlier about touching on, like, whether you could, like, spot people bringing drugs in jail. Like, yeah. one of the, like, the sick things was um, when newborn babies would come in. No. You'd, yeah. You'd sort of, like, some of the, like, the female staff were there. They'd, like, kind of like do this facade that they were making the fuss of a newborn baby. Yeah. Yeah. But they were like, be like seeing what this baby's probably got hidden oh, within the okay. carry seat. Oh, okay. And this particular female staff I was working with at the time, she went up to this baby. She's like, hello, how are you and all this good stuff? And this baby smiled. And in the cheeks of this baby oh, my God. were two packages of drugs. Yeah. Wow. You are joking. Wow. Like and, and like this, this, this female prison officer said to like the mother, she said, "I just saw sort of like made a fuss of your baby. There's two pages hidden in the cheeks. Can you remove them from the cheeks? Because we're now going to call the police." That's and she just funny. went in there and basically just hooked them out of the cheek. And I don't know what it was, but that's just like just, oh, that's how desperate these people are, you know. And that's probably how much this guy is in prison is putting pressure on his partner yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. bring stuff in, you know. Oh, that's wow! Mad. I mean, that's that's something else. That is, goodness. Would the I don't know. Well, so I just need to process that for a minute. Using the baby's fucking inner cheeks. Like, what if the baby choked? What yeah, if the bag yeah. split? Like, fucking hell, do, man. Do do child Thank services. You. Child services get involved then, right? 
they would surely yeah like you know like because you know like a prison officers they've got no like powers of arrest yeah yeah, yeah. Police officers. But as soon as they're on prison grounds you can detain them because they've brought something in their prison and okay. all you do is just call the police and then they get taken away but right. I should imagine that child services would have been called on something like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got play, you might have the odd uh, open cell. Do you know what I mean? Oh, this one's not being used. In you go. <laughs> it's a brief walk. But, um, I remember you saying um, about, which surprised me, you know, her- heroin addicts going into prison and um, like the the giving of methadrone yeah. on site. Yeah. And, and like just the sheer amount of taxpayers' money that goes into that kind of stuff. Do you want to just tap into that for a second? Yeah, like um, you were getting, obviously, guys that were coming in because we'd get prisoners that had come from what they call a local prison. So they'd go there on remand, they'd be at a local prison for a bit, and then once they get sentenced, they'd get dispersed to another jail. So we'd get these guys in where they've, because it wasn't lawful to let them go cold turkey. You know, like yeah. obviously everybody's yeah. seen train spotted in yeah. the regular yeah. going fucking ape shit in the room. But yeah. Yeah. that was kind of like inhumane to let them do that. So they obviously brought methadone into the prison and uh, a, uh, a blocker called Subutex, which is kind of like the same sort of thing uh, as, as uh, methadone. And you'd get the guys, that'd be, you'd get methadone down in the, in the jail. And this queue would be like 40 or 50 long. And you just kind of knew what kind of like problems you know heroin add on society because yeah every week this queue would get longer and longer and longer yeah and you know as a taxpayer yourself you'd be thinking like you know you you kind of like say to yourself you don't know what kind of upbringing these people have had of and course, anybody yeah. can get hooked on drugs you know and yeah, i'm not yeah. just saying you know just yeah. because i'm on camera but anybody can get hooked on drugs yeah and um these people would be queuing up for methadone and you looked at it and that was like sponsored by the local NHS primary care trust. Yeah. And you're thinking, fuck me, I've got like, I'm paying my taxes here, you know. I have to ring, if I want a doctor's appointment on Monday morning, I'm phoning up eight o'clock in the morning trying to get through. Yeah. And I can't get a doctor's appointment, but these guys are having methadone in here and Subutex is costing my local NHS. Yeah. Thousands of pounds a week, you know, and then, I know, yeah, and also, like, when these lads would go cold turkey, that would be an absolute headache for the staff. Because yeah, yeah. They would go crazy, you know, when yeah, they yeah. go cold turkey. But you just think, like, how mad society is that these people are dependent on drugs and you kind yeah. of have to uh, weed them off it, you know. Yeah. I bet some of them, it's probably almost a, like an advantage to go to prison because, like say, you got that regular methadone, um, I don't know, like if you're heroin addicts and like you know it's hard and it's get the money for but yeah, if, if yeah. they wanted to go on methadone on the street you know they can then they could do that but some of these guys were just like they were heroin addicts they'd come to prison and because they still needed that fix yeah yeah to, yeah, yeah. Oh, they'd go on methadone and you knew as soon as they come out the first thing that they were oh. going to be doing was buying heroin again yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it doesn't really fix the issue does it yeah fucking hell um so i've You've told me before about some uh, spicier moments uh, in prison related to uh, riot gear, etc. Were there not in the not in the new um, COVID term of, of a lockdown? Were there ever like riot prison lockdowns where you had to gear up and and go to war? Yeah, like often, you know, like there'd be sort of like a designated member of staff or numbers of staff in each prison that are kind of what they call advanced. CNR train, which was a control and restraint thing, which was like all holds and locks and kind of like jujitsu holds it. Yeah. All staff are trained up in, but you did have like the, uh, an odd percentage of staff that were trained up on this uh, advanced CNR. Um, if a guard smashed up a cell and he's threatening staff or himself, you would end up getting kitted up and that involved three staff, one on a riot shield you see on TV, you know, helmet on, pads on, boiler suit on, you'd go in and take this guy out and you'd restrain him and take him to the segregation unit. And usually these people are either high on drugs. Yeah. Just real, or either just a fucking angry bastard, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, just I'm, want to take out on you, you know? And I've been there before and we had this guy on the exercise yard in the segregation and he was out in the yard on his own and he was, he was complete, you know, fucking crazy. This guy was. 
And um, I don't lock them. I said, like, I said, if I let you out an exercise today, when it's time to come back in after half an hour, just come back in, mate, because I don't want to be fucking getting all the gear on and coming around and rolling <laughs> around with you because, you know, we've been getting on well. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> today. And um, he let him on the exercise yard. And I went out there and I was, and at the time I was smoking, and I'd go on an exercise yard, have a smoke for the last 10 minutes. I'd be like, yeah, come on in, mate, and you come down. He looked at the floor, and I thought, fucking hell, here we go. And he looked at the floor, and he just shook his head. He went, no, nah, I'm not coming in tonight. And I'm like, <laughs> I went, no, I said, I said this to you before, and I said, you're going to come in one way or the other. I said, let's not do this today, because I said, I don't fucking want it. And he'd be like, no, nah, I ain't fucking coming in. He went, go get whatever you want. Go get your power and range again. gear on. <laughs> I'm not fucking coming in. So I basically got this guy in the exercise yard, make the call on to the superior, the senior. I said, look, he's not coming in. What do you want us to do? And he's like, well, you better get fucking kitted up then and get him on the exercise yard. So you'd be there and you'd have your shield. You'd have your shield up for like 45 to grand because you're going to hit this guy because that's like your best weapon in your arsenal. So you were there, you'd be at the exercise gate door, the shield would be up. You'd have two screws behind you, like in an arrowhead formation. And you'd be there and he'd be like pacing up and down as prisoner and you've got like a, a balaclava on like to sort of like hide your kind of like nose there and your eyes are just beyond show. And you were hoping that he didn't know that was you. <laughs> and, he'd be, and he'd be pacing up and down and then like the psychological games kind of, he'd be like, I fucking know you. I mean like, you just say nothing. He'd be like, I know you. I sure you know you were out here earlier trying to be having a fag. And I'd be, you're thinking, he went, you're fucking getting it first when you come out here. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> there you'd go, you'd hit him with a shield, you'd be rolling around. He'd have a bit of a fight. I'd be throwing it on, throwing it on, and you'd, you'd put him in a strip cell because he just won't conform, and you'd be stripping this guy under restraint, you know, and people out there have got children, you know, oh, it's putting a, a fucking baby growing <laughs> through. Yes. Girl, but you imagine a grown Amazing. man fighting. Jesus. You know, fully clothed, and you're trying to strip this guy to make sure he's got no weapons on him, and... Just a complete nightmare scenario, yeah. Does it, even with the pads on, can it hurt when they eat you? Yeah, because like you're there and, that, and they know that they're going to try and bite you and things like that and yeah. shit at you. And, you know, they, they know you're worried about people having hepatitis and allergies. Yeah, and yeah. Because like yeah. there's gaps, you know, is there yeah. gaps, obviously, there must be gaps. No, you're fully bored oh, yeah. suit up. You've okay. got pads up to your, your, your elbows and you, you, you've got your helmet on as well. So... It's kind of like basically getting beaten up in motorcycle level. <laughs> I was going to say, is it? Do you get a, do you get any kind of like buzz from oh, that? Most adrenaline, it, it, like go. you know, your yeah, adrenaline yeah. goes. Would, you know, is that is that part of the 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 job? Like you know, that sort as of as sick as it sounds. Like in the early days, you kind of like your adrenaline. You know, everyone's been in a pub where there's been a bit of bother, bit of bothering you. Yeah, your yeah. adrenaline start pumping, the legs start going a little bit, and that was like that for a few years. But in the yeah, end, you get used to it. I know it sounds really sort of cheesy and a little bit kind of like crazy, but you became a bit numb to it, thinking, yeah. I just want to get it by put away, really. You yeah. know, you had no adrenaline buzz from it in the end, which was like, you know, you'd be afterwards making a laugh and joke with it, but the guys you're working with, and yeah. you'd be like, this ain't fucking normal, is it? I've just like been rolling around with some murderer for fucking Yeah, second. yeah. <laughs> and they having a cup of tea. Because I just I imagine yeah. they, have to, they have to be a certain kind of person to, to obviously do the job. And yeah. there must be something inside this that's, that's like, you know, you, you kind of want to explore the stories and, and uh, I don't know, like I so say, we've, we've done security and stuff in the past and, and sometimes it can, can get a bit boring. I imagine it's not like that in prison, but you kind of, you know, something kicks off. You're like, oh, right, yeah, let's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. let's go, boys, sort of thing. <laughs> but like I say, you, you know, you're dealing with, you know, very dangerous people. So obviously it's probably not, not so much like that, but... Like I say, it must have to be a certain type of person For to, sure. uh, to, uh, and like when, when I left big the set job, of kahunas, like, mate. For sure. <laughs> yeah. But when I left the job, that was kind of, it was a bit strange when I left the job because I went back in their engineering and I'm away working on this piece of machinery and I'm working and this guy I'm working with, he said, is everything all right? I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. I said, but I'll be honest with you. So I worked as a prison officer for a lot of years. I said, and I'd be working away, but I said, I'd have one ear. Yeah, so yeah. I tapped it outside. I said, and I'm finding it really hard to struggle yeah. on doing one thing. You know, I said, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I keep wanting to lift, uh, listen to something that's not going to happen. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, hell, you know. But that was. I just found how to concentrate on one thing. Yeah, because I guess there you're just always 
on edge, isn't you? It's yeah. Like, yeah, there's yeah, always yeah. something that yeah. can. Uh, well, it's a different. Yeah. Every day is a different day. I imagine. Yeah. Yes. You let uh, your guard down once, and like, yeah, you can, you know, it can be. Yeah. Game over. For you or like, for a prisoner. Uh, like touching on when I was like going back to when I was at the training school, the old SO there, the senior officer who'd done the training school, that was like going uh, like military S like we said. His opening line to us was, you're all going to fucking die. That was his <laughs> <line>. <laughs> and, and everyone sat there, I saw like fresh prison officers, and they're like, oh. what do you mean by that? And he went, as a prison officer, he said, when you retire, he said, within the first five years of retirement, he said, that's got the highest death rate yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. in any job because you're working and your pressure is up here yeah. of like expecting it to kick off and looking after God knows who, what for so many years and you retire and your stress levels have come right down. So in the end, the prison system done kind of like a, a phased retirement where the guys would like cut it down to three days, two days, yeah. and then they'd retire, you know, but they reckon that, that um, death in the first five years of retirement is... Yeah. It's quite high. Same. It's the same in the military. Like I was in the army five years. It's exactly the same. Anyone who does like the full twenty-two, yeah. The once you get out, the like the retirement age as well. It, yeah, it's like it's about five years. It, it's it's yeah. mad. Um, and it's, I'm glad you touched on like the military side there because when I was um, at the college, you got you worked with a lot of ex-military guys that yeah. come out, and they'd like either join a police prison service. And I was working with this guy, and he'd done his three weeks at the training school, went back to his prison. Then he came back. He was, I think he was at, um, I think he was at Bedford, I think, this guy. And he said to me, he went, I said, how was your, your week back at the prison? He went, do you know what, mate? He said, I don't think I can fucking do this. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he said, I was a, he said, I was a squatty for, I don't know, 10 years or whatever. He yeah. said, I've just been to a prison, he said, and them fuckers are getting looked after better than what I was. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said about the food earlier, because... um. Oh, like the, 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 the joke in the army like the chef's the hardest job to do in the army because no one ever passes the course <laughs> <laughs> but like the fi- shite, to be fair like, it depends it depends on the chefs as well but like generally the food it just wasn't great and it's yeah. like it's a bit too budget yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and like feeding mass people and it, it just wasn't great but and it's how I imagine the it's all nutritious but, yeah. know, it's the right food but it's just yeah it's just Fucking not that great hell. You can get some good chefs though within, yeah. within there who can like spice it up, but um, it's pretty bland usually. Fucking that's is, what, Oh yeah, I was gonna. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, sorry, mate. Is it um obviously the cause, like I say, I, I like a bit of excitement and stuff. And, yeah. And I, until you're in the position of you know what the the job role that you're in, you, you don't know. But yeah. Um, is it something that you would you would ever recommend to you know for people who like excitement and or is it more for people who have got like a calm head? Um, um, I don't know. You kind of like that's a good point, really. You kind of need that mix in the prison service, you know. You kind of need somebody yeah. that that has got a cool head, but also you need somebody who's a little bit streetwise and probably. I'm not saying like he's going out every Friday night and getting wasted, but you kind of like he's, you kind of need them people that have kind of like not live life on the edge, but you know, probably been out on a Friday night as a youngster and probably been in trouble with the police, but kind of like just not been sent to prison, you can't yeah, need that. Yeah, yeah. A bit of understanding. So if you get somebody who's like come out of university and they've done a fucking criminal <laughs> psychology degree or something, these people aren't going to be able to relate to, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know, like the, the normal aspect of um, looking after a prisoner, you know. That's, I think, you're right there, what you said about relating, the relatability is going to make your life easier, isn't it? Because then rather than telling someone what to do, when you're like asking them to do it, it's, it's going to be easier. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's because like really I say, I'll be honest. I can't think of a harder job than mm. than being a you know a prison guard or m- more yeah. stressful really because it's it's every it's every day, isn't it? There's yeah. no like I say, it's yeah. It sounds you're, yeah. Is there ever a moment <laughs> where it's like oh fucking hell, it's peace and quiet now, or is it always just like something's going to go? I guess when they're in the cells, I don't know. Yeah, like you know, like when you've got a good wing, you know, you think you've you've got a good crop of cons on there. That sounds crazy, but you think. These guys are all doing their time. But I'm not saying that's every day that you're rolling around with prisoners, but it is, yeah, they, they would go through like weeks upon end where you'd be like, oh, this is going well at them. They never got yeah. more guys on it. Everyone, and then they, you'd get the one bad apple and then that would just like, <laughs> if it brought drugs onto the wing and you'd be like, fuck me, that's, that's just game over now. It's just fucked it, and, yeah. And you'd, you'd take a while to claw that back as well, you know? Yeah. Fucking hell. So can, can you just, because what, um, 
you know, Dan, Dan saying about the military and the food and that, and, and you were saying that you, your guy was, was there and said, you know, fucking hell, they treated better than, than us in the army. Is it, it was, is it just like the food or is it like, is it, you know, what's, what's the full. I, I, I don't really know that to be honest, because obviously I've never served in well, the army. That's such a sad this, thing. This, this guy was like, I don't know, just say like he'd been serving in Iraq and all this good stuff, you know, and he'd come back and he'd done his three weeks at the college, which was where he went first. He'd done a week back at the jail. He comes back to the training college. I'm like, oh, how, how was it? How'd you find it? You know, and you could just see this guy was fucking broken, mate. Yeah, mate, yeah, that's what I mean. It must fucking. He was like, he, he went, I can't handle, mate, what they were getting. I said, well, I said, well, I don't really get that much. You know, and if you went, if, you know, if anybody from the outside, everybody reads in the press that prisoners get this, they get that, they get a good standard of living. It's not true. It's, it's pretty shit. It's pretty grim. Right. You know, and they have to kind of earn any privileges like what I touched on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That stuff. But this guy was like, I can't handle it, you know, and you were like, anyone who's on the course, you try and put an arm around him. Like, yeah, you know, I can't be that bad. He went, mate, he said, I don't think I can fucking do this. Yeah, and and he and he couldn't do it, and he's like, after about two days being on the course, I think the reality of him going back to his parent jail, yeah, kind of got closer and closer, and he just thought, fuck this, I'm not doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. fucking hell. Yeah, that I think the the thing when I've dealt with like ex-military and stuff, it's difficult because it, I've seen the army as well. That's why people in the army sometimes struggle with civilian life. It's like. Yeah. Because of the the structure, when you get told to do something, you just do it. You don't ask questions and stuff. And it's like, it's so different than when you get into like a, a normal job. Or like say dealing with prisoners and like, you know, like say he's he'd be dealt with like, he when you get your rank, when you rank up, you ask them to do something, just go and do it. But obviously yeah. like with, like I say, with prisoners, it's probably more of, if you get on with them, it's same, but like you have to have that report. If you just go, right, you yeah. do this, you do that. Like I say, some That's of them have never been told go. what to do. So instantly... They're going to have a problem with you because you're an authority figure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, you're better off in that situation becoming mates with them, and then like, yeah. you have to. Oh, well, like I say, you probably have to be a lot, lot more street smart. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's, yeah. There's less guards as well. That you know, yeah. you're completely, be, you're yeah, co clever. You're completely understaffed. So, like, you have to use things like you know, like. Yeah. Playstations and bits of food and yeah. whatever, like to your advantage. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah. like I say, if it if it kicks off and there's only three of you. You know, like I say, in the army, if it kicks off, you've usually got like your whole oh, yeah. squad you've with got, you, yeah, and yeah. you know, you got and you got we weapons. <laughs> yeah, you got weapons and stuff. Yeah. But like yeah, I say, you have, a gun. you have to be, you know, very. It it sounds, yeah, I, yeah, it sounds like you have to be. On the wing that I was on was, um, I used to employ a lot of um, travellers on the wing. You know, they'd be okay. working on yeah. the like, you know, and these guys, you know, as you, as everybody sees on telly, these guys are, you know, they 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 brought up like boxing, aren't they? And yeah, 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 yeah. Part yeah. Of it, yeah. And. You'd give them like the plum jobs on the wing, like working on the hot plate, cleaning the landings, because you know these guys could handle themselves. Yeah. And you know people were like, you know, respect for them because they could handle themselves. You know, like other prisoners. But but the travelling community, like everybody, has obviously got this stigma against the travelling community. But when I was working in a prison system, they were the most loyal people. Mm. Oh, that's cool. That you yeah. could ever kind of like, yeah. Yeah. you know, everyone, anybody probably watch it, be like, no way, but. Yeah. They were such a loyal bunch of people. Honourable. You know, yeah. That's yeah, their, their know, culture's built off yeah. kind of loyalty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you'd done something for them, they really wouldn't forget it. Yeah. You know, cool. that, you know but if it, if it went wrong for one of them on another wing, they'd all stick together. They'd yeah, stick yeah. together like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. But, you know, and like I was getting like a, 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 some travellers um, mm. locked up and they got released, you know, they shook me out, you know. They were like, oh, thank, you know, thanks, you know, for we had a good laugh while I was in it. And this guy working on the server on the hot plate, he became somebody like I worked with, really, you know, because he's unlocked more than the other prisoners. You give him a little bit of leeway. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, cell. he's not locked up all the time. You know, as soon as everyone has gone to work, you'd unlock him and he'd be unlocked on the wing all day. And you'd get other prisoners, you know, that were related to him after he'd been released and they'd come up to the gate on the wing and they'd ask for like me, they'd ask for me and I'd be like, Oh, me, me, me brother told me to come on in and give you a look. And I'm like, oh, who's your brother then? And he'd be saying, oh, and, yeah, well, I know him really well. I see, he said, you know, I'm just like my brother. And he told me to come on here. And, you know, he said, you might be able to give me a job on the wing. And you kind of get that cycle going, you know. Yeah. And they were just a good crop of people, you know. That's cool. Oh, amazing. Um, so when you, you know, you're saying about um, building rapport, um, et cetera, with, with, with um, prisoners, and they were, you know, some of them were very grateful. They didn't forget it, etc. Were you ever offered things, you know, as as thanks for for yeah, being nice like to them? 
you know, I wouldn't say all the time, but that was something that you uh, you would get offered, like free. I would say that was a bribe, but some would offer you like thanks for gratitude. A particular guy um, we had, he was from just outside London, and most of the prison I locked up were just outside London. You know, when we're like 130 mile away from London, so yeah. everybody's wanting a transfer to a London jail, mm-hmm. which is not impossible to get because you've got their family coming up from like London and the home counties, which is a hell of a journey. Yeah. Really. And they're bringing their children up for a two hour visit every other weekend. So this guy that I had on my wing is a really good guy. And at the time he was, uh, he was in for uh, important drugs and he had his own car business. And um, he was important drugs in the tires of these cars. And at the time he got a hefty sentence for bringing in uh, cannabis. Yeah. And uh, he ended up wanting to get his transfer back to London. And I was what I call his personal officer. Mm-hmm. He used to have about 10 prisoners that you'd be kind of like allocated to that anything they needed, like probation reports, kind of like a bit of a school headmaster really time, but up there report how they're doing in jail. Yeah. And he said to me, he says, uh, you know, I really want to transfer back to a home county. So I said, look, you and 500 other do. But I said, I'll see what I can do because you're kind of like, he don't cause me no problem in there. He's a polite guy. Yeah. And he had this own car garage. And um, I said to this guy, I said, look, I said, I'll do the, do the best I can and I'll, I'll get you transferred back to London. Because his missus was, you know, his missus was nice. He had a nice family. Yeah. But obviously, he could saw the option of making probably a quick buck yeah. on bringing cannabis in. So in the end, I get him a, uh, got him a transfer at Canterbury Prison, which was a bit of an unheard of thing to do from our location. So I thought, I know his missus is up at the weekend. I thought, I'm in the visits room on the weekend. I'll break the news to him and his, uh, his wife at the weekend and he's got a transfer next week. So I sat down and I spoke to his wife like most weekends and I sat down having a chat with him and his wife. And uh, I went, I was going to leave it till the end of the visit, but I'll let you know uh, next week. I said, uh, John here's got a transfer to Canterbury. Yeah. And they were like made up, you know, because his wife's like doing like a four hour round trip every yeah. day. And, uh, he went, oh, you've never had a look on the, uh, my car website, have you? I was like, no, no, I've not. And she said, have a look on there tonight. She said, and tell me what you think. So I go home that night, and I'm sat in there, and I'm just sort of like, oh, I'm wow, and have, a, have my tea and whatnot. Sat there on my phone. I thought, I'll just have a look at this guy's garage. Mm-hmm. And I go in this guy's garage, and I thought, I'll fill the search. I'll look at, like, the highest price car first yeah. and fill it down. And this highest price car was a, a Bentley Continental GT. I was like, I like of this, you know, and there's a lot of uh, like Subaru Impressors on there, you know, which were top top of the range car at the time. Yeah. So the next day, I'm like, came into the prison, I'm working away, and I said, he went, oh, did you have a look on my website last night? I went, yeah, 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 I did, yeah. He said, what do you think? I went, yeah, oh, yeah. I said, lovely, mate. I said, cars are nice and there's well presented or not. He said, yeah, but what did you really think? I'm like, yeah, I said, no, I had a look at the bed because I thought, he's asking me questions here because he's probably thinking, You've never fucking looked at the website. Right, no, yeah, yeah, so he wants proof. Um, yeah, and I went, you know, I said, yeah, the Bentley Continental GT is lovely. I said, really nice car, that. And he came closer into me and he went, do you know what? He said, you've really helped me out here. He said, uh, that's yours if you want it. <laughs> and, like, and you're talking about 150 grand motor. Here, you know? And yeah, I was like, you know. And I sort of stepped back and I went, what? He went, that's yours if you want it. I went, no, I said, I can't take that. I said, no, I can't take that. He went, he went, put it in the missus name. No one will ever know. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't take it, mate, because I said, it's a Bentley Continental GT. I'm going to want to drive it. <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm driving around in a Bentley Continental GT. We ain't buying one of them on a prison officer yeah. salary. <laughs> yeah. You know, no matter how much you're going to be fucking wow. HP, that's it. And he's like, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying, you know, and that was just one of the things Fuck that you get off of. I've been offered, like, Holidays in villas in Tenerife in Spain, you know. Yeah. And not and that weren't like I, weren't I was gonna say you do look you do look like you got nice tan. I've had the roof down on the old GT. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I drive over there in my Subaru and <laughs> Yeah. No, I, for, for for the for the for the listeners and the viewers, I can vouch I've never seen uh, Michael or my cousin Daniel driving a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. They hide it well. <laughs> He's in the garage appreciating as I speak. <laughs> that's, it, yeah, that's it. Yeah, sorry, you say you say the villas in that. Just cut. Yeah, like I've been offered like villas in Tenerife and Spain. You know, like the old cliche, like you've really helped me out. If you want one, you have a fortnight in Tenerife in the villa and you just be like, I can't take it, you know. 
Because yeah. if you come back and this guy's actually still locked up in your prison, you're like, what do you think to the villa? Yeah, that was lovely. Well, can you just do me? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah I was going to say that. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it. I'm not kind of got, got you then. Yeah. It's like the programs, isn't it? Like you get, you take the thing and then it's like, oh, yeah. well, now, now you're in my pocket. Yeah. It's, like, it's a place you don't want to be. Yeah. But, you know, like even like I've been out now and like I used to kind of mentor the new prison officers when they come in now and I used to give them the same kind of speech. Yeah. Every time they come in, I said, look, I said, don't watch how I am with them. I said, get your own style. I said, you know, I can sometimes tell these guys to fuck off and, yeah, this kind of things. I said that I've got that like rapport with them. I said, don't watch how I do. I said, I said, and if you if you're going to be an asshole to these guys every day, I said, please bear in mind. I said that they'll get out one day. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. See you out yeah. on the street. Yeah, and if you've been horrible and bullied them, yeah. I said then you, I said they're not going to take too kindly to that. Yeah, I said to get your own point. style. And I've been out even like recently. I've been out and I've seen prisoners that I've locked up. You know, and I left in 2014. You know, and They've seen me, said hello, and had a chat. And oh, that's cool. Yeah. A particular time, I was in a in a nightclub in Norwich, and um, I was in this nightclub, me and a few of my friends, and that was my round in this club. And I'm at the bar, and you kind of like waving the note at the barmaid to get her attention. And uh, next thing I know, these two bottles of Moe get fucking landed on the bar. <sighs> and I look at my mates, I was like, who's a piss there? I'm not buying Moe. Oh, yeah. And in this dark corner, it's like horseshoe-shaped bar. There's this guy in the corner in a suit. He's like putting his hand up, stick his thumb up, but his, his club's dark. And I'm like looking over my shoulder at my friends. I'm like, who the fuck's this guy? And I'm like, yeah. what? It's this guy's waving at me. And uh, he's like sticking his hand up again, like pointing at the, like, the moe at the bar scene. And I'm like, sort of like nervously put the hand up, like to acknowledge to like face for these two bottles of champagne. I might should be going, are we going to fucking have one? And I'm like, to be honest, I, went, I don't know who he is. This guy says, I don't want to start drinking somebody else's champagne. Yeah. So, fuck it. So you pour this champagne out and this, this, this guy starts walking around the bar and everyone's like, this guy's not coming around, he's not coming around here. And as he got closer, obviously the light is getting on this guy's face and I obviously realised that somebody else to lock up. Yeah. And he came up to me and he went, and he was from like London, this guy, so... I said to him, I said, I don't even want to know what you're doing in Norwich. And drug dealer. And he went, he went, you was always all right to me. He said, you never caused me any harm. He said, you've done everything I ever asked you to do. He said, you're a nice guy. He said, there's two bottles of champagne. He went, have a good night. Oh, and oh, I just like this fucking, honestly, this stretch fucking limo and picked this guy up. <laughs> and, he, and he went off in this limousine, like, you know. And I was, <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> he wasn't wearing an eye patch, was he? Hello, boys. <laughs> yeah. Lovely group of boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, so there, there's a, a double barrel here because it kind of um, it, it, tell, it kind of tells off of what you were saying, you know, about being nice and, and don't be a dick because you might be threatened or whatever. So I do have two questions that are kind of linked. So first of all, you know, were you ever threatened? And second of all, you you obviously said to me, you know, that you met my cousin within the prison, started seeing my cousin, and then obviously if that news got round, that could be used as leverage against you, et cetera, et cetera. So if you could like maybe start start with the, my, my cousin and, and that kind of scenario, and then have you ever had someone go like, look, when I get out of here, I'm going to fucking kill you sort of thing? Yeah, like, um, what, you mean Danielle's going to kill me when she gets out? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> After she sees yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Daniel came in as auxiliary staff and um, obviously we met when she was working there as auxiliary staff and kind of like when you're in a new relationship, you know, you're kind of like in the honeymoon period and yeah. you're kind of talking to each other whenever you can and yeah. you kind of have to be cagey about that. And I used to say to her, look, so even because in an auxiliary role, that was kind of minimal prisoner involvement. Mm-hmm. But these guys are looking at their cell windows when they're locked up and they're obviously seeing me and Daniel having conversations daily, you know, and, you know, cons I even trust them. They were coming up to me and they were saying, you know, that, that auxiliary staff, Gov, are you, uh, are you seeing her? Are you? You're <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm not. Because if they knew that you were an item, I didn't want kind of like her getting shit, you know, from the cell window because there's a female in a men's jail and at the time she was like in her early 20s. Yeah. It's fucking eye candy, isn't it? You know, and yeah. it's it's kind of leverage on that. So, you know, I used to say like, if if any of them ask you, we're an item. I said, don't ever fucking let them know that we're an item because I said your life will be shit. And I said, then that could be kind of like leverage. Yeah. For me, I said, you know, just 
you know, kind of like used to have this thing where I used to say like to, to new staff as well, like friendly, not friends kind of thing, you know, be friendly yeah. with these guys where you have to be. Yeah. But don't give anything away about your personal life, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, even like just small things like, you know, I've never, you know, like can't you even trust, like you never like spoke to our children or anything like mm. that because anything like that could be used to leverage, you know, even, even yeah. you might've been locking these guys up for like five, six, seven years. You kind of wanted a little bit out of your personal life. And these guys were good at getting out of you as well. Yeah. You know, you can think like, fuck me. I just told them that I'm not going to be at home all weekend. And if this guy knows where I live, yeah, fuck yeah. Hell, yeah. you know, and you just, just, just so strange things like that. And, um, we had a, a, a prisoner a few years ago and, um, he was uh, he was horrible, and um, he was um, he was mopping the landing. I'd go along mopping the landing, and he said to this other prison officer, he went, uh, "Does uh, thirty-two Clarkson's Road mean anything to you, Governor?" And uh, that was where this guy lived. This prison officer lived. Fucking. And hell. he went. He went. What'd you fucking say? He went. You heard what I said. He went. Does uh, 32 Clarkson's Road mean anything to you? Obviously, I've made that road. Yeah, of course, up. yeah. And we could bleep it if not. And, um, and uh, he went, um, you know it fucking does. And this guy that I worked with, he was like a real old school prison officer. Yeah. He just absolutely fucking lost her. Really? And he grabbed this guy and he grabbed him by the fucking throat and he literally picked him up the floor. He said, if you fucking quote my name and address again, he said, I'll make your fucking life a misery in the prison system. Because obviously that he's got his family there. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, and then the next thing you know, this guy's getting locked up at dinner time. This guy I worked with had reported it. And the, the powers of being in the prison, obviously, there's a security risk there. Straight away, he was lifted straight away to the segregation unit down there because this guy knows where he lives. Jeez. Uh, Fucking hell. That must be scary as, if, yeah, as a prison yeah, officer, yeah, you know, yeah. to be like, oh, fuck, if that information gets out. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell! And um, just as you've tapped on it there, because I was, I was when I went around the prison, I was locked in the segregation unit. Uh, it wasn't very nice. Can you just explain the room to everyone? Because it's pretty, well, it's segregation, isn't it? Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it was uh, basically an L-shaped uh, wing. I think it was fifteen cells on there, and that was kind of like your worst of your worst of your prisoners in there. That was twenty-three and a half hour bang up. They'd come out and get their food. They'd get half hour exercise a day if they were good. They'd let they'd be having a shower every other day, and that was kind of where you'd have prisoners in there if they were a pain in the ass where they couldn't conform on a wing, where they've been assaulted, bullying, drug dealing, even prisoners that were like down there for their own protection. Yeah. If they'd been bullied, they'd be placed in there, and anyone that couldn't conform down there, and you had to restrain them, you'd go in there and restrain them. You put them what they call in the box. Yeah, that's the place. And that's the- it was just basically a concrete bed in the tiniest cell with a little skylight on the top for a little bit of light. And yeah, yeah. You'd go in there and you'd strain and you'd strip them naked to make sure they got no weapons or anything concealed on them. You'd leave that cell and in there would be kind of like what I'd call just like a, a baby grow blanket that they'd put on, you know, a lot of head and an arms in there. And that's, that's where they'd be. And they'd be locked in there until basically they'd calm down. Fucking hell. But they're in there for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, they're in there for a reason. Um, I have a few more points, boys. You have any anything you want to to ask? Ah, I'm pretty sure, like I say, he's gone, gone over uh, some well interesting. Yeah, yeah, there's there's the big thing, obviously, in the showers. I'm going to ask in a second, and then I just got a few. Basically, in our Discord, which where our community is, I just said, look, Michael's coming on. You got any questions? So I'll just quick fire some of those questions as well. But before we get into that, how real? is the whole, you know, dropping the soap in the shower thing. Because that is the one thing that you just hear time and time again. Is 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 rape in prison as prevalent as as they make it out to be? Uh yes. <laughs> it is. Really? It's been yes. down a few people's spine, but yes it is, you know, like especially like the you know, not just lifers as well, but it's kind of prevalent with lifers, you know, that have been in there a long time. And you know, any any prisoner that came in that looked like a young boy was kind of prime target. You know, I know it sounds horrible, you know. Fuck. Particular time it sticks into my mind, a prisoner came down to me and he looked like a young boy, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go into the st- typical stereotypical fucking Harry Potter look, but this guy had the glasses on, he looked young. <laughs> and, 
he came down to me and you could see he was visibly shaking. And I was like, is everything all right? He's like, yeah, can we go next door? And I'm like, yeah. So we go in this private office and he's, he's talking to me. He's kind of scratching his arms and, you know, you could see that this lad felt dirty. And I said, you know, is there anything you want to tell me what's happened? He was like, you've got to assure me that I'm safe and all that. And I'm like, yeah, what happened? He's like, I've just been raped upstairs, you know, and you'd be like thinking, fuck, you know, and you've got to take a statement off some guy. Yeah. Fuck. Who's been raped. And, you know, and even like figures on the out, everybody knows that rape conviction, you know, is quite fucking low, isn't it? You know, and yeah. Yeah. this guy's been raped in prison. You think, how oh, the fuck are you going to be able to prove this? And there's just no way of proving it. And, you know, it did be, yeah, it, it did go on. Probably sometimes it would never be reported. Um, there'd also be consensual sex going on in a male prison. Yeah. Mm. You know, which I'd, uh, which I'd caught actually happening before. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's the kind of thought you think you'd hope it would fucking leave you, really, but it didn't. Um, <laughs> this particular time, this, uh, I was locking up at lunchtime, and there was a two-man cell, and I went to open this cell. Like, you'd, like, open the door to make sure that they're in there. Yeah. And then you'd lock the cell, but as I opened the cell door, it hit on the back of this chair. So the first thing I do is it hit on the back of the chair. I was like, what the fuck's going on in there? So I left up the cell observation flap, and basically I saw this other prisoner coming off the uh, the remains of oral sex on another prisoner. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like thinking, fuck, you know, did I really just see this? You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah that could have happened, but you know what you saw. Yeah. It happened. So you quickly lock the fucking cell door and you'd be like thinking, fuck, and I'll see you. You'd come down to the other staff and you'd be like, look, I just caught this guy. Definitely, was definitely sucking him off. And I'm like, do you think that was consensual? And I, well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah you know, I, suppose I don't really want to think about it too much. Yeah. And that particular afternoon, I thought, you know, am I going to break this subject really? Or am I just going to kind of fucking ignore it? Yeah. And that, and on, on, on the prison, the mail would get delivered at lunchtime. So any internal mail, like probationary letters, any external mail, they'd always get delivered around about lunchtime. So when they're locked up at lunchtime, you'd be sorting them out. And this particular prison that I just basically caught giving somebody a blowjob, mm -hmm. he had a, a, an official letter from the prison. And he was meant to be released on uh, home detention curfew, a tag, you know, which goes around your, oh, yeah, yeah. your ankle, the old ankle bracelet. And he'd been declined this, uh, this ankle bracelet. So... I unlock in the afternoon, this guy came down to the office because, you know, like when you've been a naughty kid and you want to go back to the crime and you want to see if somebody's kind of aware of what happened. Oh, yeah. He came straight to me and he wanted to see if I'd picked up on what I'd said at lunchtime. And obviously I had. So I had this home detention curfew later in front of me. I said, look, I said, I've got some bad news here. I said, you're not going out on tag. I know you're going to find it hard to swallow, <laughs> but <laughs> you're not going home on tag this time. And he kind of looked at me and that was like, you fucker, you knew what was happening up there. And I thought, that's all I needed to say. I said, I know you're going to find it hard to swallow, you're not going home this time, but we'll leave it at that. Yeah. And I think he's obviously aware that I kind of knew that there was uh, oral sex going on up on the landing, yeah. It's not, it's not what you imagine, uh, you know, seeing on a on a, like a Tuesday afternoon, I'm sure. <laughs> 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 dear, oh dear. Um, so... Two more questions from me, one from the Discord, one one from me, um, slash a few people in the Discord, to be fair. Um, what would you say, in your opinion, is the most horrific um, injury slash fight, you know, whether it's self-inflicted or, or by someone else that you've seen in prison in yeah, your time? Yeah, obviously self-harm and, you know, thankfully I never did see a death in the 11 years I was working did there. Did you it not? Happened. But I never actually did see a death, thankfully. Um, but obviously I've been working in a prison in the actual jail I was working with where we, where we did have deaths in the jail. Mm. But the worst thing that ever happened to me was um, it was a Sunday evening and all the prisoners are locked up on a Sunday evening and there's kind of like a skeleton crew of prison staff in the jail because obviously the prison staff and the prisoners are locked up. And coming over the radio, they asked for uh, urgent health care assistance and this is a Sunday night, so there's no healthcare in the jail. So I go to this wing, I'm wandering across, and I kind of half expected it to be a, a prisoner that I knew quite well because I knew he was on this wing and he was having uh, like self-harm difficulties. Yeah. 
and I went onto this wing, and as soon as I walked onto this wing, you know, this wing corridor was probably about 40, 50 foot long, and as soon as I entered this wing, I could smell like the metallic smell of blood. Yeah. And I'm thinking, fucking hell. And as I'm walking closer to this cell, the smell is getting worse and worse and worse. And I could feel my hands getting sweatier and thinking, fuck me, what am I going to find here? And the other yeah. prison officer that this cell door was in this cell with this prisoner. And you're talking like a 5.3 cell. And I'm not joking. It looked like a fucking bloodbath in there. You've never seen blood like it. And you've, you couldn't walk in this cell without stepping on blood. There was fucking blood up the walls, a scene on the floor of the bed. And this other prison officer, I'm like gone in there, like you kind of like assess this situation as quick you can. And this guy had cut his arm here. And he was, and I was like, how the fuck has this guy cut himself? Because so in the he's in, the, in a special cell here because there's no any ligature points. He should have nowhere where he can self harm. And what he'd done was he'd smashed a ceramic uh, coffee or tea mug, whatever you want to call it. And what he'd used a shard of that and he cut his forearm just down there. And this other prison officer's holding his arm up, and every time his heart is beating, has pumped and blood out of the artery, you know. And and I'm on the phone to like the ambulance, and I'm like, look, I said, this guy's losing a lot of blood, he's lost a lot of blood. I said, you're gonna have to get in here quickly. And I'm like, well, what kind of like obstacles have we got when we get in the jail? I said, Well, you ain't just gonna be able to fucking drive in there. I said, someone's gotta come up to the main gate, I've got to let you in, you've got to yeah. drive in the ambulance. And um this other guy, this other prison officer, I'm on the phone, he's shouting to me as I'm on the phone to the ambulance. We're fucking losing this guy. What's going on? And you could hear him like thumping on his chest to bring him back. And he brought him back a couple of times. And um, the ambulance came in. They took him to hospital. And I can't, I don't know what, like how many pints of blood a human can, human has or how many they can lose. But one of the doctors up there said, this guy was really lucky. Just for example, he said, he'd lost like 14 pints of blood and, if he'd have lost one more, that'd have been game over. And Jeez. you know, not just like from like my point of view, but if this guy would have died, that'd have been coroner's court, and you'd have been reliving that for a, yeah. a yeah. fucking year, you know. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But you know, like touching on that, like yeah, the amount of people that, that had mental health issues was oh, I can imagine. I can is imagine. fucking crazy. And you, you know, you weren't trying to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, even staff now, like you had like guys who were like at serious serious mental health issues. I had a, a particular, and you, you spotted someone straight away, like he, he would have mental health issues. They're kind of like their, their own personal hygiene would start deteriorating. And that yeah. might be mm. one of the first things you'd notice. And uh, this particular occasion, this uh, this prison off, uh, prisoner was pacing the, outside the office. And I looked at him, the first thing I noticed, he was unclean shaved and his hair was getting all, and he actually smelled, you know, like an unclean smell. And yeah. I looked at him and I thought, Fuck me, he's got no shoes on even. He's just wandering up and down like a rape dog. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, 10 minutes, I've got to get this guy locked behind this door. And he's like wandering up and down talking to himself. So I said to him, I went, you all right there, bud? He was like, uh, yeah, 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 I'm all right. I said, uh, you, are you sure you're all right? I said, you don't look all right. And he come up to the uh, the office door and he went, yeah, he said, I'm all right. He said, but my, my bulldog's not all right. And I'm like, your bulldog, I thought it was like for some sort of like slang term for fucking medication at the time. And I'm like, what do you mean, your bulldog? He went, yeah, my bulldog in the cell, my little dog, he went, he's, he's, he's ill. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know. And you kind of like, you know, yeah. if I tell that story now, people do kind of chuck at it. But this guy actually fucking believed a dog. That he a had dog. a bulldog in his cell. And he said to me, he went, um, I need you to come up and have a look at it. And I went, yeah, I said, I'll be up in 10 minutes and I'll have a look at him for you. And he went, you know, because he said he needs some medication. He said, if you don't get him this medication, I'm not going to fucking lock up tonight. Oh, yeah. And I'm like thinking, fucking hell, do you know what I mean? It's this guy. I went, all right. I said, I'll be up in a minute. So I get this guy's cell, and you kind of what they call shoot the bolt. So you open the guy's cell so it opens the lock so the door can't be slammed shut when you're in there. So I, I shoot the bolt on this cell door. And I went, Where, where's your dog then, mate? And he went, he's in the corner there. I went, oh, yeah. I can see him, you know, and you're like yeah. playing on a fucking yeah. mad facade. I went, oh, it seems all right to me. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, I said, um, I've got some milk in the office downstairs. I said, I'll bring a carton of milk up for him. Give him that tonight. I said, in the morning, I said, I'll get healthcare, come and see him. I said, but, you know, they're not vets, these guys. I said, but, you know, if he's got to go out to a vet in the morning, I said, well, we'll deal with that because 
he was just trying to do anything to get this yeah. door behind this door and not, yeah. not yeah. roll around with him to something fucking fictitious, which he honestly believes is a, is a, yeah. is a dog in his cell, you know? That's mad. Fucking hell, man. I, I mean, Jim, you said, I think you said it perfectly earlier, you know, no day sounds the same in prison. <laughs> yeah. like, fucking hell. One, one day you've got a mental bastard in, in an exercise um outside in the exercise thing that you've got to get a riot shield to take down the next you, you, yeah. you feed in an imaginary dog milk just to get a guy to go to bed yeah. Yeah. it sounds like yeah. you just have to be very creative with, yeah. with what you've yeah, got yeah. around you and and you have to kind of yeah it's uh yeah man i mean i commend anyone that has done that job from from yeah. from here and this you, like i say you don't uh, you very rarely get to hear from from yeah. the inside so um that's been I want to ask a insight. question actually. Just did it ever? Did it ever get to you a bit? Like obviously every day going in there. Oh, that's a job, and you go home and stuff. But you're essentially spending half your life in a prison. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, does, does yeah. that ever like mentally? You're like, you know, because you know you have jobs and stuff, don't yeah. you? And you're like, you sit behind a desk I mean, or whatever. And it's I thought like, working in pets at home was bad enough. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> so yeah, I imagine over a period of time, you're like, you, you think, God, I'm sick of this place. I've, you know, yeah. if you did, you do ten years at the same prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do what they call like detached duty on other prisons, but I kind of like parent jail. I was at the same place like, most most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but. You know, if you'd had like a two week holiday, yeah. you'd walk back into that prison and the fucking smell would eat you straight away. Oh, yeah. It's to have that with the army camp and like towards after being there three years and yeah. like I, at the end I just got sick of it and I was like, I just you know, I, I mean I here. don't want to be here. So um yeah, I just wondered if you had come across that. Yeah, like you'd walk into the prison your first day back after a two week holiday and that'd be the smell of piss that would hit you straight away oh, because man. the prison I worked at, they didn't have any toilets in their cells. They'd have a lot of chamber pot. And Got ya. No one wants to be sitting with piss and shit in their cell. Yeah. So they're, they're fried out of the window. Oh, and you oh imagine, like, shit. 72 prisoners chucking fucking piss out of the window. That'd hit you straight away. Yeah, yeah. And then after you'd been back about a week, you'd get immune to that smell. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's fucking crazy. I think where I'd like to, to leave it, Mike, is um, you were saying about you know, when you just left and, you know, you're working on the machines and that in the engineering job and you'd have one ear on, on what's going on. Obviously it's been what, seven years now. Um, yeah. are, are you like, if, for want of a better term than better now, but do you know what I mean? Are, are you past all that now or is there still? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get, I think it'll probably take about a year to kind of like get out of your system and, you know, now you can, by a situation like this, you can talk back to it and, have a few laughs about it, you know, and yeah, obviously yeah. tell some sort of stories, you know, which is a bit, a little bit harrowing, a bit serious, but yeah, you know, but yeah, I think I said, yeah, that does get your system quite quickly. And most people that I know that remained in the job have all left, you know, it's a very high turnover of staff. Mm, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, and even when I was in there, you get anyone that's done like eight years plus. Yeah. You know, you know, and used to say to yourself, like, to the prisoners in there, I say, yeah, you're doing five years, mate, but I'm doing life in it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I can, I can retire at 55 if I'm lucky, you know, but yeah. I said, I'm doing life, you know, all I do is go home every night, but I'm still back in here every day. And, yeah, yeah. And then when you used to say things like that, you used to think like, Fuck. fucking hell, what am I doing this yeah. job? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that is... You used to think you used to do like a bit of good with prison, you used to think like, I've really kind of turned this guy around. I don't think I'm going to see him back in here. And then a year later, yeah, back in. they'd be back in and you felt like you'd really turned this guy's life around and you think, fucking hell, he's, he's back again, you know. Yeah. And I felt like I'd really focus my time on turning him around and he's back again. Yeah. I, there was, do you know what? I am going to ask, because I didn't know if to ask the question. Someone in the Discord, Sontaha has asked, um, and this is what we'll leave it on. Do you think the prison system works? I knew you were going to ask that. You don't have um, to answer it. Um, and if you don't want to answer it, we can cut this bit. <laughs> that's fine. Um, it, I don't know, it's a bit of a cliche, really. I think it works for some. Mm, yeah. But it doesn't work for others. And the reason I'd say it doesn't work for others is because I would call it an occupational hazard. Going to jail for some people yep. is just like nature of the fucking beast, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to jail. Yeah. Because half of these people don't give a shit about some of their loved ones. Yeah. If if you've got a family on the out. Yeah. They did care, you know, and they'd be like, you won't fucking see me in here again, Governor. Yeah. yeah. You know, and but you would see the career criminals come back, you know, people that 
but drug addicts had to, to rob to fund a, cr- a crime, you know, and yeah, to fund a drug habit. Sorry, you know, they'd they'd, they'd just be continuously in and out of prison. So um, it works in some aspects because you know, if you've never been in jail before and you're kind of like done wrong once, you'd be like, "Fuck that! I'm not going back yeah. in there." Yeah, 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 yeah. But like some of them, that was just an occupational hazard for some. Yeah, I mean, everywhere that's that's fair enough because everyone's different, aren't they? You know, yeah. that's I mean, yeah. it's a subjective, subjective yeah. Yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, to I think for the majority, it does. You know, one and from done. I think things like this as well. You know, yeah. getting an inside thing is like is amazing. It's like yeah. I yeah, definitely yeah. do not want to go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be fair, I've always yeah, thought yeah. in my head, oh, it like because you hear these stories, like they got playstations and all this. But from what all the stories you've said, it's like. I no. fuck that. I would yeah. not want to go there. Yeah, like, and and as well, like I think the the job that you do, it you know, needs to be commended as well. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, but, you know, like it's a bit of a, like a, a, the people who still work in the prison system. I kind of say it's a forgotten service because yeah, a hundred percent. That's it. Yeah. You know, people don't really want to know what goes on behind there. You know. Yeah. Everyone just thinks, get them locked up, get rid of them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You still you know, you've got to look after them, ain't you? Like the, yeah. day yeah. to day, that's your job to. Because you know everyone thinks that they get a pr- that when they're in prison, prison should be harsh and uh, the environment should be harsh and all this. But you were always told that it was kind of drummed into you. They've been punished by the courts. That's their punishment. Is going to prison. Once they're in jail, they're not to be punished again when they're in prison. If they do wrong in prison, yeah, yeah. they'll be punished again. But I can't be continuously like yeah, yeah, as it was 50, 60 years ago, where you just kind of like basically just beating these people up just yeah. to give them like you ain't coming back in air kind of thing you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah I think like I say some you know, police officers kind of get you know they get the congratulations of catching the the criminal but then what about the people that have to you know look after them for for, for the rest of their sentence yeah, so, you yeah. know it's kind of go, goes a little bit unforgotten and deal, like, yeah, and deal with them yeah, do you know what I mean yeah, 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 yeah. the police officers got, got to catch them deal with them for yeah, one then, day and then, them it, yeah and it's like you know they get the praise but yeah, no, you, you certainly get my praise, mate. Hundred um, yeah. percent. Yeah, anyone who does that job, especially yeah. after listening to this, get, gets my yeah. praise. So well done, mate. And yeah, I, just, I, I, you know, I don't want to sound biased because obviously, I, you know, Michael, we know each other, and and when I next see you, I promise you, I'm going to buy you a, a, a drink, mate. But thank you so much for being on. And I have to say, yeah. what's this? It. Like sixty eight episodes. This has been my favorite episode. Yeah, 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 mate. Yeah, yeah. So it, thank really. you so much for your time, mate. Yeah, and, cool, yeah, no yeah, nah, this has been quality, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, and yeah, fucking brilliant. Thank you so much, Mike, once again. Yeah. Thank and, you, man. Uh, Mike. Is that, you got any? Sorry, you got any clothes? Anything else you want to say, Mike? Or no, I think I'll just don't go to prison. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. Michael's got loads and loads of stories. So uh, if, yeah. if if people have yeah, enjoyed. Definitely. People Wait. have enjoyed this one. Let us know in the comments, and I'm sure we could. Uh, hey, you're welcome. Right. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Legend, mate. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Right, guys. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you very soon. Bye, uh, guys. Up the, 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 the